Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I wondered where this came from. In the old days, the man of the house had the privilege of nice, clean water when they took a bath. Then all the other sons took a bath. Then the women and finally the children took a bath. And last of all, the babies took a bath. By then, they say the water was so dirty you could actually lose somebody in the tub of water. Hence the saying, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Oh, yuck. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, good morning on a Monday, April 13th. Good morning, and thank you very much, Kate Smith, and God bless America. And right now, we want to remind you, good morning from Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale, along with some of our great advertisers, too. And they include Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Uh, locally owned, you get on the route service, 734-6969. And also Valleywide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida. In Rupert, everything for the farm, the home, and the ranch at Valley Wine Home and Ranch. Right now, let's say good morning to our Pledge of Allegiance person. Good morning, and take it away. Good morning, Mr. Bell. Yes, good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your call this morning. You betcha. Have a good one. All right, sir. Thank you. And right now, it's time for the weather. And the weather is brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for their blue door. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays from 10 to 4. Carpet and flooring and kitchen construction, home decor, whatever you need to make your house a home, they're ready to help you. And a lot of newly refurbished furniture. They really can help beautify your home. Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, 678-6945. Look for the blue door. Right now, here is Michael Rogers' weather. It's going to get windy today. Phil, you and I have been together for over seven years, and I tell you it's going to get windy. What, what do you think? Is there a storm coming here pretty soon? It's dollar. It sure is. It's going to be here one by Tuesday. See, there's a spring storm coming through this area here, and the first one should be here Tuesday. So the wind's going to start to kick up later on this evening. You've got a advertisement in the form of a wind advisory for wind gusts up to about 35 miles an hour later on this afternoon going into this evening. Rain should be here Tuesday. should be cloudy for Wednesday and Thursday, and then you're going to see, start to see some sun as you work your way towards the weekend. Daytime highs up in the 60s. Enjoy the weather. The only weather you got. Uh, Michael, great job. Appreciate it. And the weather brought to us every morning I'm on the air right after the news. And that's by Cheney Flooring and Home Design. 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. And they can help beautify your home. Oh, my. We've got a lot of things to talk about. First and foremost, there is hope for pro golf to have another hero 
and I mean another hero, uh, 21-year-old Masters champion Jordan Spieth. Absolutely, he is a professional in every sense of the word and someone that everybody can be very, very proud of. Very gracious and uh, very, very nice family. This kid is going to be around for a long time, I hope. Jordan Spieth, congratulations on winning the Masters Golf Tournament yesterday. Don't forget Darrell's Cleaners, and uh, they're located at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley, and they can clean everything. I mean, you take all your rumply crumplies in there, and they absolutely can get them brand spanking new. I'm serious. Whatever the task, they will uh, absolutely amaze you when you go to pick up your clothes. So please stop into Darrell's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley, waiting to serve you. And uh, the Idaho number one. One choice for wireless internet is SafeLink Internet. You better believe it. Write this number down. Get the uh, folks to help you with the fastest of internet and the best. No contracts, no credit checks, unlimited data, and they're really good. Very personable service. SafeLink Internet, 677-8000. That number again, 677-8000. You call them today. Really good folks. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I thought, this was in the paper the other day, and I've got to share this with you, because when I read this, I went, what? What? <laughs> what? Uh, the Kentucky Derby is coming up in just a matter of days, and uh, I always look forward to the Kentucky Derby. But now listen to this. The Churchill Downs leadership of the racetrack has added some rules for the uh, race goers to enjoy the race. Now here is a list, uh, a partial list of the new items that they have said no you cannot bring to the racetrack during the race of the Kentucky Derby. Listen to this. The list of items that cannot be carried into the track by guests at the Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby was expanded to include selfie sticks and listen, remote controlled aircraft including drones. What? Can you imagine the horrific, tangled up, twisted up, devastating wreck that they would have? If some nincompoop took a drone to the Kentucky Derby and tried to fly it over the horses' heads and he might not make it over the horses' heads and it ended up in the whole pack coming down the stretch, this is insane that anybody would even think about taking a remote-controlled aircraft, including drones, to the Kentucky Derby. Oh, my, 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 my. Good morning. Give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, don't forget our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call, 678-0459. Now, they open the doors at 7.30 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. And, well, we're sure popping a lot of light bulbs here lately. I'll tell you what, we've had all kinds of problems with our light bulbs. Well, they've got replacements. They've got all your light bulbs, many, 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 many kinds. And all your fluorescent light tubes and your ballast and repair parts, all your wires fuses, cords, everything for heating and electric needs at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. And don't forget, they provide warm winters and cool summers. Really, really good folks. Oh, and by the way, too, when I'm talking about really, really good folks, I also want to talk about our friends over at Valley White Home and Ranch. Now, you know that they are busy. You know they've got everything over there for you at Valley White Home and Ranch and are looking for forward to serving you. Now, 4-H'ers, don't forget, you get 10% off. You get 10% off over at Valleywide, and uh, boy, that comes in mighty, mighty handy when you're trying to take care of all your animals and feed all your animals, so you be sure and stop in and see them today at Rams <laughs> Ramsey, at Valleywide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Mandy and Sean, the whole crew serving you at Valleywide Home and Ranch, and you know, they've got a great 
tax department over there, and if you have a card that says you belong to a certain association, you be sure and stop in and see them, and you also will get 10% off. They've got all your feed needs, all your equipment needs, all the 4-H needs, and a great fishing department at Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. You stop in and see them today. All right, give us a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And uh, Hillary has announced that the Queen is coming into the chambers to run for the presidency. Oh, big deal. I have not talked. And, and this is where I want the gals to call in this morning. I really do. I have not talked to one single woman, not one, whether it's been at church or whether it's been in passing on the street or whether it's been at lunch bunch, I haven't ran into one single woman that wants Hillary to run for anything more than possibly dog catcher. So, if there is a woman out in the audience this morning that would like to uh, prove me wrong, I will give you the floor. I will not interrupt you. I would like to hear your reasons as to why you could possibly support a Hillary candidacy. She announces her presidential candidacy by social media. It wasn't even live. It was just so cold, just like this woman is in person, so cold. But yet, the news media is fawning all over her. Oh, my. I know Lester Holt on NBC why he was gushing. He was gushing like a bottle of champagne. And many others, oh, Hillary finally said it. Oh, my goodness, it's wonderful. They've already appointed and anointed her as the new president. And she's coming out saying that now she is the voice for the middle class. Well, I would assume that I'm probably in the middle class, and I don't want her to be my voice. And I understand to show how she's trying to relate to people, she's going around the country, or will be going around the country, in her little minivan that she calls affectionately Scooby. Isn't that warm? Oh, I just love it. What are your thoughts? Come on, gals. I would love to have a couple of women call me and just flat tell me their honest appraisal of Hillary Clinton. Whether you're for her or against her, I don't care. Give me a call at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Give me a jingle. I yai yai is all I can say about Hillary Clinton. I am so afraid. I'll just be very blunt. I do not want to see either. Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton even get close to getting the nomination from their parties. Why? Why the sameness? We've been there and done that, seen that, and suffered through that with both the Clintons and the Bushes. Let's get some fresh blood in there. Let's get some fresh thinking. Let's get somebody that really has got a gung-ho attitude towards America. No more. No. Bush or Clinton. Uh-uh. Nada. Call me, 436-2244. Uh, don't forget Denny's Restaurant. Oh, my. Now, next week, we're going to be over there. Next week, don't misinterpret what I'm saying, on the 23rd at Denny's Restaurant for Zeb's Lunch Bunch. And I'm going to tell you, it's a very special lunch bunch this uh, month, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley, for all the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All the menu items are absolutely delicious. They hit a home run with everything they've got on their menu, and you'll love it. You'll absolutely call your friends and neighbors and all your relatives and enjoy Denny's Restaurant. And they've got a new location, also in Twin Falls at 291 Pole Line Road. So, there you go. No excuse. Plenty of opportunity, both in Burley and Twin Falls. Denny's Restaurant, absolutely delicious. Let's get some calls in here. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Also, our thanks go out to Barry Equipment and Rental. 
Went by there the other day, and holy smokes, are they busy. I went by the 159 West Highway 30 location, and cars and pickups all over the place getting the equipment. They need to get the job, the spring jobs, done right. Oh, my, all the Bobcat compact equipment, and they've got all the walker mowers and the coyote tractors and the loaders, and all you have to do is just stop in there. Great, great financing available for you. And uh, three locations, Addison Avenue West, in Twin Falls with Eli and the crew and then of course South Lincoln over in Jerome and then like I told you 159 West Highway 30 in Burley Berry Equipment and Rental you stop in and see those good folks today Come on, ladies, please, some gal, give me a call and give me your thoughts about Hillary Clinton. I want to hear what you have to say on that subject. And uh, she, now the anointed queen, uh, I just can't imagine with her track record or lack of, with her demeanor or her attitude of holier than thou, is that the best that the Democrats can muster? I still go back and I look at Joe Manchik and others that I think would be highly palatable. But no, no, the Democrats are stuck on Hillary Clinton. Calls are welcome. Come on. Um, you know me and my attitude. Oh, here we go. About global warming. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Good morning, caller. Thank you for your call. This morning. Oh, no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as I live in fear, and the reason is here. <laughs> Hello, dear Helen. How are you? Okay, do you really want my opinion of Hillary Clinton? Well, listen, Helen, do this. Do me one favor this morning, and you got to make a promise to me first and foremost. You can, you can say anything you want about Hillary, but please remember my license. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is I look at or think of her and it's Bar City and ooh, 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 you get the creepy crawly. She wouldn't even make a good dog catcher for dogs. Uh, Helen, real quick, and the caller that's waiting, stand by. But Hel <laughs> why? Why are they anointing her the queen all of a sudden as if, oh, my goodness, it's her turn and we're so blessed? Why? I really and truly can't figure that out myself. Haven't they got a brain in their head? I I just don't understand. She's she's dead meat. <laughs> Well, that kind of sums it up. Thank you, Helen. God bless you. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you very much. Caller number two, I'll be right there. Stand by. Don't forget Scott Cano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. This guy is the best, and I'll tell you what, get rid of all your trees that are a problem or prune your trees, stumps out of the ground, and install sprinkler systems or revamp your old one. They're the best, and I know because they put our sprinkler system in and do a wonderful, wonderful job. Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service, 336 South 450 West of Paul. Number to call, 438-2485. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zab. How are you this morning? Good, Tony. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, the Constitution has been the cornerstone of our country for many, many years. And you take the likes of uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, Barack Obama, and even Jeb Bush is going against the Constitution with his uh, open border, uh, the way he feels about it. And as far as uh, Hillary Clinton goes, she's trying to get the, uh, well, what would you call it, the, the Whoopi Goldberg gang mm -hmm. behind her to try to push her into the presidency. And I think that's where the problem is with Hillary. She, she, you know, and uh, now we've got the Blasio, who is anti-Constitution, who would like to see the uh, illegals have the right to vote. And, of course, if they do get the right to vote, uh, you know who they're going to vote for. And that's uh, Democrats like Hillary Clinton and, and de Blasio to keep them into power and keep them on welfare for the rest of their days. You know, Tony, what you just said sums up uh, exactly a major problem I was going to talk about this morning. Uh, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio is pushing for at least over a million illegals to have the right to vote, and then he's going to sit there like a big fat Cheshire cat and know that they're going to vote to put him back in office. And there's an old saying, Tony, and I know you know this is true, that whatever happens in 
in the Big Apple of New York City soon spreads all across the United States. Oh, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right there, uh, Zeb. And you know, where do, where do you stop it? Uh, pretty soon, we're going to have so many of these people that are coming in here, going on welfare. You and I can't afford to to uh, support them, and your children and our children are going to be paying taxes to send these people to college when they can't afford to send our own people to college. Oh, it's going to be a lot worse than that, my dear friend. God bless you yeah. for your call as always, and. Uh, you're spot on. You hit the nail on the head this morning, Tony. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Zach. You bet. God bless you. Bye. Nice, nice man right there. Hey, don't forget to Penetron Soil Conditioner by Maisie. 21-year proven record of increasing yield and quality of all Idaho crops. Speeding germination. This sounds like Superman, and it is. Speeding germination, reducing crusting, improving stands, stimulating root growth and microbial activity. And you know what else? It saves irrigation water, and that's a big saving money-wise for you. You better believe it. Panatron treated crops have better roots that reduce stress for water and nutrients. Increase your crop's performance with a proven soil conditioner, Panatron by Maisie. Get the original, not the cheap imitations. Contact your crop advisor today to obtain Panatron by Maisie. And then for more questions, you can call Dr. Adrian Arp, too, at 734-2255. Panatron by Maisie. Uh, calls are welcome. Uh, come on, gals, give me a call. Uh, if there's any ladies out there that really think, oh, Hillary is fantastic, please call me and tell me why. Why would you think so? Give us a call, 436 227 4587 I want to just throw this in real quick. Uh, put this down on your calendar for the 23rd at D uh, Denny's Restaurant, our lunch bunch. It is going to be a special birthday party, and we are going to be honoring Russell Smith as he's going to be celebrating his 90th birthday on that day, the 23rd, at Denny's Restaurant. And we want to say thank you to Walmart Smiths and Handsome Mortuary and also Stokes, wonderful people at Stokes with their delicious bakery. They're going to be donating a cake. So we are going to have a birthday party uh, next week on the 23rd for Russell Smith. Don't you miss that. Right now, we're going to have the Capital Press Ag Minute, and it's brought to you by, this is such a nice lady. I mean, she is so polite, and she is absolutely so well-trained and gifted in knowing everything about your hearing and mine. Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. You bet. 312-0957. That number again, 312. 0957. Have a hearing screening. You know, don't be sitting there going, huh, what? I can't hear you, Martha. Please take my advice and call her today for a hearing screening. 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology. Call her. I'm going to ask your indulgence. 60 seconds. I'll be right with you. Stand by. Here now the Capitol Press Ag Minute. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capitol Press, the West Ag Weekly. Nearly 350 rural communities, small towns, and cities across the country are competing for $10 million in prizes and hope to be chosen America's best community for the $3 million top prize in a contest launched by Frontier Communications. The contest to bring together community leaders, business owners, and local elected officials is the brainchild of Maggie Wilderotter, chairman and former CEO of Frontier. The contest is meant to jumpstart communities and get community leaders talking and working together to strengthen their area's economic viability. Frontier is partnering with Dish Network, CoBank, and the Weather Channel to encourage entrepreneurship to foster stronger economic futures in rural communities. This is Brandon Tenner. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Uh, thank you very much. Brought to you by Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology. And believe me, she's been an audiology doctor for over 10 years and understands hearing. Please give her a call, 312-0957. I'm going to have a contest, but before I have a contest, I've got to get this caller in. Good morning, caller. Thank you for your patience. Good morning, Zeb. Yes. You know, I don't think Hillary could lead a dog to water if he was, hadn't had a drink for a week. <laughs> 
She scares me, Jerry. She scares me. Well, I don't see any talent there, no. All I see is deceit, dishonesty, and corruption. You know, you're going right back to the old bill problem. Mm -hmm. And the same problem we got with Obama. I agree. You can't take a word they say and go with it for anything. I agree. They're just not honest people. Well, we're going to do quite a campaign on this radio program. If she does become the nominee from the Democrats, I am going to go after that full bore. And uh, I've got a kind of a, a war chest of different ideas that I'm going to use against her. So, Jerry, God bless you, and thank you for your call this morning. And God bless you. And one of the reasons I'm saying this is for doing the deal for Russ Smith. He is a wonderful, wonderful person, and he really deserves to be honored. All right. Thank you, Jerry. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey, we're going to give away a half dozen cinnamon rolls right now to Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 East Street on the Square in Rupert, and they're open 6 to 6, weekdays 6 to 2 on weekends, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they've got a bakery over there that will knock your socks off delicious. Sophie's Chatterbox. If you're the winner, you got to call her at 436-0354. Let her know when you're going to be in for your cinnamon rolls. Now, listen very carefully. I am going to ask, I think, a little bit tougher question this morning for you to win the cinnamon rolls, and old Wheels over there is going to answer the phone and put you on the air. Name, name two United States presidents that their last names are used in newspaper cartoon series. Ooh, that's a little tougher. Name two United States presidents that their last names are used in newspaper cartoon series. First person to call with the right answer will uh, win the cinnamon rolls. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I stumbled on this question when I was looking at the cartoons in the paper the other day, and I thought, hmm, why don't you give me a call if you know the answer? Name two United States presidents that their last names are used in newspaper cartoon series. Give me a call at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Where are you? That can't be that hard. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Clinton and Obama. No, 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 no. Uh, the cartoons are series every day in the paper, and they're doctors, or pardon me, they're cartoon characters. Nope, that's not right. Clinton and Obama is not right. Name two U.S. presidents that their last names are used as the title for the newspaper column series, cartoon series. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hey, is it... Hello? Hello? Go ahead. Yeah. Is it Carfield and Franklin? No, but you are very, very close. Thank you very much for your try. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, caller, good morning. Uh, have we got another call coming in? Uh, the two that are coming to mind right now, and uh, the only ones that I've found... Okay, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Garfield and Hoover? No! I wanted to give them away so bad, but you're close, but thank you very much. i got to have both answers correct. i got to have both answers correct. Uh, give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Name two United States presidents that their last name is also used in the newspaper cartoon series with their last name. What is it? Boy, I tell you, some of you guys have been so close. You've had one right and the other one not. Give me a call. Come on, quickly, 4-3. I can see everybody scrambling to their paper going, Hurry, Martha, I want those cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Calls welcome. Come on, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. The first one is pretty easy. The second one you have to just think a little bit about, and uh, it's pretty obvious, pretty obvious. It's in every day in the paper, 
uh, name two United States presidents that there, the president's last name is also used in the cartoon series in the newspaper. Come on. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Is it Bailey and Garfield? No. No. No? No. Okay. And uh, you, uh, you are very, very close also, and I appreciate your try. Good heavens, let's get somebody with the right answer. Please, I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, I will say that there has been one right answer on a couple of calls. Gee whiz, that ought to really narrow it down. But the second answer hasn't happened yet. So come on, give me a call, 436-2244. Maybe I should give you a hint, maybe, that um, one of the presidents was the 20th president of the United States. Oh, that makes it easy. Hurry, give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. While I'm waiting, I'm going to do a quick commercial for some other dear friends, so stay tuned. Come on, give me a call on that. Get the right answer. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Streamline precision. I can't imagine how come nobody's picked that up yet. Streamline Precision at 120 South, 100 West of Burley, next to Dot Foods. You can call Tim Vaughn and the crew at 431-7314 today for estimates. What you need built. They are a company, a family of companies, actually, providing construction, excavation, and fabrication services. And they can build all your on-the-farm storage for grain bins. They're authorized dealer in Sioux Cup, Chief Balin, and Nucor Buildings. Don't forget, and oh, by the way, they got the big equipment to handle your or dirt deliveries, the dirt hauling, they got the big side dumps, everything else, you give them a call today. Nice people, 431-7314. Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley, the pros building for you. Good morning, caller, you're on the air. Hi, I think it's Garfield and Jackson. No! Oh, I wanted to give those cinnamon rolls away so bad. Now, just keep in mind, everybody, thank you for your try, ma'am. These are cartoon series that appear in the newspaper every day. And there are two U.S. presidents' last names that are in the cartoon series as the headline for the series. Some of you have had the right name, half of it. But not the last half. Come on, give me give me a call quickly. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven. And I gave you a big hint. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Garfield and Grant. No, no, you're not thinking. You're not thinking. Thank you for your try. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this hard, but it is, evidently. Maybe I should owe you an apology for coming up with this. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Uh, yes, is it Garfield and Wilson? No, no. We're going to run out of presidents pretty soon. Uh, I will say that some of you have had half of the answer correctly. The other half have not. Again, name two United States presidents that their last name is also used in the headline for a newspaper cartoon series. Now think real close. And I already gave you the clue as to the one that we haven't got. It was the 20th president of the United States. Call me, please. I'm running out of time. 436-2244. 1-866-927-4587. I got to do another commercial here. Hold on just a minute. Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main in Burley, right across from the airport. Zach and Joanne, call her. I'll be right there. All your spring remodeling, they can help you. All the lumber packages, they can help redo your roof with all the shingles, and they can upgrade all your windows. I mean, my goodness sakes, they can help you. They got a great quality carpet. All of this, along with Tartar Farm and Ranch equipment, at Minakasha Sales, sponsoring Doctor History on Tuesdays at 10 06, 1321 East Main in Burley. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. Hello. Yes. Guy Field and Pierce. No. No. I am so, I'm so sorry. I I really wanted to give it away this time. Come on, hurry. I said it's the twentieth president of the United States. Good morning, you're on the air. I am? Yes, go ahead. 
It's Garfield and Fillmore. Oh, what a blessing. Who is this? Jesse Hess. What was the name again? Jesse Hess. Jesse Hess, is that correct? That's right. All right. Jesse, do you like cinnamon rolls? Yes, and I, I eat it Oh, my goodness sakes. Well, thank goodness it is Garfield the Cat cartoon series and Mallard Fillmore. Mallard Fillmore, a cartoon political series. You are correct. It was Garfield and Fillmore. Jesse, thanks for calling. Oh, my. I was sweating bullets there for a minute. I didn't think we'd ever give that away. 436-224-1866-927-4587. LeBron James, Cleveland Cavaliers, outstanding basketball player, is also evidently a very outstanding person. I was watching the news the other night, and I heard this story, and it brought tears to my eyes. There was a young lady that was suffering from brain cancer, and she had attended a school back east, and she was a basketball player. Her name was Lauren Hill, and you probably heard about it. She had terminal brain cancer, and she fought and fought and fought and did her best to try to overcome that dreaded disease. And in the last couple of days, Lauren Hill passed away. And LeBron James went out of his way to send condolences and very, very nice verbiage about Lauren Hill and how he said that she was his hero and how brave she was and how much he admired her. And at the bottom of the uh, tweets and the Twitters and everything that he sent to the family, he said, I know that Lauren Hill is in heaven and she's probably already said hello to my grandmother. You know, with all the bad people in sports and when you hear some good story like this, it just makes you feel good all over. So congratulations to Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron James. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, would I have won if I'd have said uh, Garfield and Millard? No. I said last names. <laughs> because I was thinking that, and I just couldn't think of Mallard's last name. No, it, it, I said last names from the get-go. I did not say it to be confusing. I said last names. I emphasized that, and thank you very much. I did say something wrong, though, and I want to correct myself on it. When uh, I said that uh, he was the 20th president, that's not correct. I think he was the, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think he was like 17th. Anyway, I appreciate it. Good morning and appreciate your call. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Jeff. I, I've got a, something to make, make make you laugh. That last story you were talking about sports. This morning I was listening to a Boise channel and they was reading the story and the guy was reading and he said, Dennis Rodden Clinton instead of Hillary Ron Rodden Clinton. <laughs> I thought that that could uh, put a tag right on here this morning. Oh, my. Well, you know what? I can see where this sportscaster easily got confused. Yeah, 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 I would think so, too. But I just, I could picture that, you know, talking about Hillary and, and calling her Dennis, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if Hillary has all the tattoos that Dennis has, but uh, maybe she's got them where we can't see them. Well, they both have been came to the Secretary of State, haven't they? He's been over to Korea over there, so... You know, they're, they're both maybe in the running. We may never know, I guess. Yeah, and you know something, uh, now that you bring it up, uh, in some respects, Dennis Rodman did more uh, than Hillary did as Secretary of State. Yeah, yeah, and he, he divulged every bit of it, too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Well, thank you, very, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Have a great day. God bless you. Oh, my. Hey, right now, it is time for the weather, and the weather is brought to us by our friends at Lennox. You better believe it. Lennox Home Comfort Systems, and that's, of course, through our dear friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric. So don't you forget, we have our dear friends at Lennox and Ramsey offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems, whether it's a gas furnace and air conditioner.
conditioner or a heat pump, your family will enjoy the comfort. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric today for Lennox at 678-0459. Here's Michael Rogers' weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zeb at the Ranch. Yes, there's rain in the forecast. How do I know that? Well, you should know. I've only been doing this for the last seven years. Uh, it's going to be breezy today. So the quick quiz, because it's going to be breezy with a wind advisory all the way to 9 o'clock tonight. Where is the storm coming from? Uh, this particular one is something that you are familiar with, have been for so many years. Got an area of low pressure up there by Vancouver, Canada. Cold front extending all the way down into California. We should be hitting rain by Tuesday, Tuesday night. So to get there, you got some wind for today. Daytime temperatures still in the 50s and 60s, but otherwise uh, we're going to be clouds. We're going to see rain for this week, and we're going to come out of it, but it's going to be short-lived because we got a series of spring storms coming through the Magic Valley. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you've got. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Lennox and Ramsey's. Of course, Ramsey have been in the business with Lennox for many, many, many years, over 50 years, offering you the very best. Save you money. They provide warm winters and cool summers at Ramsey Heating and Electric with Lennox. Stand by, caller. I'll be right there. Don't go away, please. I I also want to remind you that Bill Estes stopped in the other day, and it was so nice to see Bill. Well, Bill Estes and Associates Auctioneers are going to have that great big Minicasha annual community auction, and it's going to be on Saturday, April 18th, right there at the Cache County Fairgrounds on the Carnival Grounds. Oh, my, it's going to start at 9 o'clock in the morning. Don't forget, they've got all kinds of goodies, tools and miscellaneous, motorcycles, snow machines, boats, autos, ATVs, trucks and trailers, quality, quality sale, Minicash Annual Community Auction, and that's Saturday, April 18th at the Cache County Fairgrounds put on by Bill Estes and Associates Auctioneers. For more information, call 208-654-2546. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Many talks. That's what's going to get Hillary anywhere because she's got... $1.7 billion for her um, campaign. Mm-hmm. Why, let me ask you something, Lorna, why is she so popular? Why are the women supposedly on the liberal left fawning over her, falling all over her, just absolutely uh, getting on their knees and railing, and the news media just absolutely thinks she's the second coming? Why? I don't know. The only thing I can think of is because the Clinton name is out there and she's got the money. Yeah. She's, she doesn't have anything else as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah, okay, right so there. Nothing that, nothing that she goes for is anything... It would benefit me. All right, now let me ask you a couple quick questions, Lorna. Just a second, real fast. Short answers. Uh, personality. What kind of a personality does she have that you perceive when you watch and listen to her on television? Disgusting. High, high class, saluting, way above everybody else. Very snobbish, right? Yes. All right. Achievements. Achievements. What has she ever done in politics? Well, she's got Benghazi. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, you know, these are things that people need to ask because she has no qualifications to be anything. No. She, she, she's rubbed shoulders with the, the leaders of other countries and stuff, but as far as anything that would benefit us as the, in the United States, I don't see that she has anything or uh, done anything. I agree with you, Lorna. Thank you so much for your call. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. I'll be right there, caller. Stand by. Don't forget Redder Showcase. They are having a truckload sale. Oh, my. Can you save money on washers? Listen to this. They got the high-efficiency top-load sets. They've got all the front-load sets. They've got it all at prices that you cannot afford to pass up. Let me tell you, they got a mana. They got Whirlpool. They've got Maytag. They've got all of them at prices that have been knocked way, way 
down for this huge truckload sale. 12 months, same as cash at Redder Showcase. 2611 Overland Avenue in Burley. Guy Redder and the rest of the crew serving you washers and dryers like, I'm telling you, now is the time to get in and celebrate low prices at the truckload sale at Redder Showcase on Overland in Burley. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, the, uh, the, the thing that we never seem to ever get is that the liberals, the socialists, they will always do whatever is necessary to get what they want. They have nobody else. Elizabeth Warren uh, won't carry the day, and then O'Malley won't. And, and the only thing they've got is this Hillary, and, and it is shaky ground to say the least. But uh, they, they are going to stand by there because I tell you, the option of whether or not it would be a Cruz or a Ruby or a Paul or a Walker is, is, is you know, would set them back so far that uh, that kind of thing is, you know, that would, oh, you know, they, they think they've really gained in the last six years, and they have. Well, Randy, let me throw a name at you. And I said this a couple of weeks ago on my program, and I'm going to stand behind it. Joel Manchuk from West Virginia. Why not somebody like him? He's liked by both sides of the aisle. He's a straight shooter. He's got a lot of good ideas. Why not somebody like him? You mean for the Democratic side? Yeah, Honestly. yeah, yeah. Right. Well, don't give him a good idea, <clears throat> Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> well, they already got a bad idea. <laughs> well, yeah, but you see, she's. I was, you know, uh, one more point I have. Uh, I've been rereading the book uh, with Dinesh D'Souza, America, yep. A World Without Her. Yep. And I watched it on, on Netflix. You can go and watch it for free if you have Netflix. The same movie. Right. And I'd never watched the movie I did yesterday afternoon. And um, so, you see, it's such a powerful movie, but you see, we have got to take control of our, of our country. Yes, I we know. We create this void, and, and, and evil will fill it if we don't fill it with something better. And it's already starting to be filled. Randy, I got another call. Thank you, my dear friend. God bless you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You said, what has she accomplished? Yep. I'll yep. tell you one thing she accomplished. She beat the living hell out of Bill, the uh, uh, Bill, the president. <laughs> well, <laughs> Over the history, I can't find no woman that ever whipped on her president. Well, they said, according to some of the books and stories that I've read, that ashtrays and lighter colored, uh, lighter weighted lamps were easily thrown, and they were. <laughs> I just had to breathe. All right, thank you Have for your call. All right, thank you for your call. Uh, this just amazes me that America, the greatest country ever in the history of the world, would settle on Hillary Clinton and very possibly Jeb Bush. Why? We have had the families. We have had the family control. We have had their politics. Enough already! Are we that dependent upon incompetent people like they are that we would want to put either one of them in power for a term as presidency or, God help us, two terms? I don't want Jeb Bush back in there. No! Enough is enough! I don't want Hillary Clinton in there. No, we had husband Bill. And Hillary has absolutely no business except maybe on a guided tour of being in the White House. I, and what amazes me is that the Democrats have no backbone or spine and they won't speak up for her on a local basis, but they'll snipe at me after the program's over. Now yeah, you said this about Hillary, and you said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they don't have the backbone to come on the air. Cowards. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Big spring tire sale. 
at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And uh, I'm telling you, now is the time to get ready for your spring and summer driving. They've got these uh, tires on sale prices that you cannot afford to pass up. They've got their best passenger car tire, the Ultra Z900, on sale. I'm telling you, that's a ripping good tire. And for your pickups and SUVs, the Wildcat AT2 on sale. Best tire value promise in the industry and very convenient credit for tires and services at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pauline and Twin Falls, Randy on Overland in Burley, the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my. Once again, I want to remind you that coming up on the 23rd, next week, Thursday, at Denny's Restaurant, we're going to have a very, very special birthday party that uh, we're organizing right now for our dear friend, Hero. Russell Smith. And uh, we're going to have, uh, thanks to Walmart Smiths and Handsome Mortuary, a lot of door prizes to give away. And Stokes, oh my goodness, the wonderful bakery department at Stokes is baking us a special cake for Russell. Oh, come on, come on, one all. Everybody be there at that birthday party celebration. It's going to be great for Russell Smith. We are going to take a little break for about six minutes and turn it back over to our main studios, and then we'll come back with my dear friend Frosty Woldridge. Don't go away. I'll see you in six minutes. Oh, welcome back. Hour number two, Zeb at the Ranch, and of course, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with our friends at Valley Wide Home and Ranch at 910 South Oneida, and Rupert, oh my goodness, all kinds of goodies for you over there for the home, the farm, and the ranch. And 4 Hers, now is the time to go over there to Valley Wide Home and Ranch, get what you need. And also our friends at Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're rolling the short circles. Western Way Services, we care about our community, our resources, and our friends. Western Way Services, lending a hand, always at your disposal. Western Way Services, Western Way services always at your disposal all you have to do is give them a call 734-6969 get on the route service and your garbage is gone it's out of there absolutely locally owned and operated company that really takes care of business they've got all the dumpsters in various sizes they've got all the porta potties i know there's a lot of spring events coming up in summer my goodness they're there to serve you 734-6969 western way services always at your disposal. Also, real quick, I want to remind you, too, about some friends of mine that have been on this radio program, I mean, for like almost 10 years. Handsome Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, Joel Heward, his family, his staff, always serving the public with flexible hours so that they're there when you need them, absolutely. And they can travel to rural towns and churches to serve the families. Don't forget when there's the passing of a loved one, they are are there always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity please give them a call today and let them help 436-5636 that number again 436-5636 Hanson Mortuary in Rupert serving you um, don't forget every day every single day on this program when we start things off after our uh, Pledge of Allegiance we have the weather brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design wonderful people Kyle and Whitney Cheney you stop in and see them today for all your newly refurbished furniture your carpet and flooring needs kitchen construction they know they know and they can do at Cheney Flooring and Home Design 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley Look for the blue door. Right now, let's look for the big, tall, thin guy over in Golden, Colorado, Frosty Woolridge. How are you, my dear friend? Well, good morning, Zeb. Uh, absolutely a, a pleasure to be on uh, the show this morning. And uh, 
just got to say a, a, a cheer to the uh, the Badgers of Wisconsin. Uh, what uh, what a great uh, what a great time and what a great moment and uh, and just sport continues. So I, I was thrilled to watch the game and uh, hope that everybody's proud of each young man that played uh, both on the winning and the losing side and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, March Madness is now at an end, but we really enjoyed this great sports competition here in America, so it was great. You know something, though, Frosty, real quick, and I won't waste a lot of time on this. Kentucky won the game, the Badgers lost. I mean, plain and simple, that's it. But what really got me after that game is seven. Seven of those Kentucky basketball players announced that they're going to leave school and go to the NBA. It's kind of a one-and-done type thing. And, you know, that just doesn't sit good with me in this era of uh, everything taking second seat to pro sports. I think those kids should have stayed in school and got their education. Well, yes, and as an educator, I, I, I concur. One of the great tragedies, uh, and it was, there, was a, there, was a, um, there was a cartoon that w when, the, when the last lockout or the last, you know, they, they struck the NBA, uh, and, and the only qualifications those players had for working a real job was to go to McDonald's mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. And, and be a burger flipper. And, and the tragedy for uh, the minorities in this country, whether it's Mexican-Americans or uh, African-Americans, uh, is that they, they literally quit school by the time they're in the 6th, 7th, 8th grade with their minds. Uh, and, and so millions drop out by the time they're 16. Uh, and what they don't realize and their parents don't realize is they're living in a highly industrial society that's highly uh, complex with computers and you need education. And, and unfortunately, uh, these, these young men, uh, they, they, they probably will do well in the NBA, but they have lost an extraordinary opportunity to broaden their minds and to deepen their minds with knowledge. Uh, and then make smarter choices. Uh, when you when you quit college, uh, you you really have just cut off your educational excellence, and you cut off your ex your excellence as a critical thinking person, as a as a good citizen, as a highly educated citizen, and, and you just you you really lack um, the larger understandings in life. Uh, so I, I'm an advocate of college uh, because it. It really gives us a higher uh, degree of intellectual understanding and broadening and, and uh, deepening of our minds. And so uh, these kids will, will stop that, and all they're really going to you know, transplant it with is just money. And in the end, you, you've seen so many of these pro athletes, they're broke within two or three or four years after they quit their playing career. Yeah. And that's a tragedy not only for them but for us too. You know, and Frosty, a, a little bit more on a note on that. What you just said is that uh, out of the seven that left Kentucky, they left that program in complete disarray. And some of them were freshmen. And you know as well as I do, they might have been highly touted freshmen. They might have tons of ability. But when they go to the NBA as maybe 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, they are going to get their lunch eaten. Somebody is going to put the crunch on them because they're going to try to take somebody else's job well that's true uh, and again the tragedy is that they didn't mature that's right they, and i and i'm just a farm boy from michigan and 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 one of the things that that i thank my mother for she just told me point blank you're going to college and and it changed my life it it, it made all the difference in the world it it, it forced me, college forces you to grow your mind, to make it greater, and to, to give you new horizons, and, and to inspire you to greater intellectual and social and, and international understanding. So it, it's really a tragedy, and so those, those kids essentially have come out of the ghettos, and they've come out of the inner city, and they've come out of the projects, and they happen to have extraordinarily fast uh, feet and hands, and they can shoot a basketball, but... So that's not that's not what life's all about. In the end, you got to get off that court, you got to get off the playing field, and you got to live your life, and you got to be a contributing human being to the American way of life. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, that's not happening for for African Americans, with 73 percent of them uh, born to un, un you know they're out of born in a un, unwed uh, mothers. I mean, the, the tragedy for African Americans in this country is, is, is the welfare and the projects and the lack of schooling, and uh, sports doesn't save that many. Uh, it saves a few, 
but it didn't, doesn't save that many. We really need to start really encouraging uh, African Americans and Mexican Americans to, to, to fulfill their high school uh, diploma and, and move forward educationally and, and vocational tech schools and, and college and junior college because in the end education is the only thing that's going to save them not basketball i agree totally <laughs> now i know that this next subject is going to make you just uh, blow sky high and your temper is going to go right through the roof but bill de blasio the mayor of new york city is working fervently this morning to allow over a million illegal aliens in new york city to go vote and you know what he's doing he's buying his vote to return to office this is despicable what they're doing I read about it and again we are seeing the breakdown of uh, the rule of law here in America by those people who are literally uh, taking over the political system and then uh, making sure that the, the rule of law no longer applies. And Barack Obama is point blank guilty uh, for doing that himself. And now you're seeing guys like de Blasio, uh, who is also undermining the rule of law. And again, as I said last week, I hope every American understands and everyone listening on this show that you're not going to understand or get this kind of information from the from the David Muir, politically correct, or Scott Pelley, politically correct, or Charlie Rose. We have to, unfortunately, if we don't uh, take action, and then I've said it before, joining capsweb.org and numbersusa.org, if we don't stop this mass immigration, whether it's legal or illegal, every person right there in Idaho, you might think that you're isolated from all of this, but I guarantee you, when the, with another 100 million immigrants that are legally coming into this country in the next 30 years, your communities, uh, your schools, your language, your culture, even your religion, is all, all of these things are going to be adversely affected uh, dramatically affected as we lose our ethos and as we lose our culture uh, and that's what's coming we, we we must must start taking action to stop this mass immigration and especially this mass illegal immigration or we are going to have to have our kids prepare for a totally different America and I can guarantee you this it's not going to be the America that you all appreciate it's going to be a very contentious America it's going to be a multicultural America and it's not going to be an America we're all pulling together in the American way because it won't be America anymore you know and, and that leads me up to my next subject I, I'm going to be very blunt about this like I was in the first hour I do not want in any way shape or form Jeb Bush to be the nominee for the Republican Party for president. And I do not in any way, stretch of the imagination, whatever, want Hillary Clinton to be the nominee for the Democratic Party. I don't want the same old, same old. I'm sick of it. The American public should be sick of it. With all the Bushes and all the Clinton regimes, it's time to get America back on track. And we're not going to do it if we reelect either of those individuals. I would agree totally. We've already had too much of the Clintons, way too much of the Bushes, and look where they led us. I mean, George Bush put us into the Iraq war that cost us $12 billion every 30 days for over 10 years, and that war killed all those kids off, all for nothing. And, and, and so that was the kind of leadership. And Jeb Bush is pro-amnesty. He's pro-mass immigration. He wants to flood the country with everything uh, from out of the world into our country. And uh, it'll just mean that we're going to go faster down the, uh, the toilet, essentially faster than a bullet train. And so uh, really we, 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 we need an American who's going to stand up for America and who's going to uh, literally get the borders closed, reduce all immigration. I just uh, finished a book by a liberal uh, named Phil Cafaro, a professor at Colorado State University. You can all look at it online. It's uh, at libertynewsonline.com. Uh, uh, it's on uh, quite a few others. And he says we've got to reduce immigration. We've got to reduce it drastically uh, if we expect to survive the 21st century as a cohesive and sustainable and viable civilization. And so at least we're starting to get a murmur out there, even from the liberals. But I'm sorry, uh, going back to Hillary Clinton, she's, she's tired, 
She hasn't done anything in her capacity as a Secretary of State. She has no credentials for being the President of the United States. She's only an emotional and the first female president. I, I wouldn't mind her being a president if she was competent and if she'd done something and she has the energy and really the youth. She's going to be 70 years old, for heaven's sake. She's, she's way beyond the years of the vibrancy of the presidency. And uh, so I, I just, I, I can't imagine her getting uh, elected even on an emotional standpoint as far as being a female. You know, I also want to ask you a little bit about uh, our foreign policy. And uh, I'm kind of skipping around here a little bit this morning, Frosty, but the Iranian deal, they keep using the word deal. I'm sick of that. I, the negotiations have been pathetic. I said on my program many, many times, if I were John Kerry, I'd have looked at the Ayatollah and the leaders of Iran and said, Okay, hey, wait a minute. Before we sit down and do anything, you will release the four prisoners that are American prisoners, Pastor Abedini, the Marine, etc., and they will be going to the American embassy in the next five minutes, or we're not going to relieve the sanctions. We're not going to do any negotiating. What kind of a weak, milquetoast society are we having here in this country to where we cater to everybody else and they, the Iranians, tell us what to do? Well, again, I hope, every, you know, history's going to show this out, Zeb, that Barack Obama is a Muslim. And all Muslims, uh, the whole tribe of Islam, only works for its, on its own behalf. And, and that man right there in the White House right now, he is absolutely doing everything he can. He's importing hundreds of thousands of Muslims in the next year and, and eight months of his, of his uh, stewardship. And he is going to do everything he can to bring this country uh, down to the, to the bottom, essentially. That's shown right now in his actions. Uh, and, and, and we're going to become, all of us, going to become the victims of this situation. And you, you can sit here and you can cry and scream about it, but unless you do something, take action, um, and support those uh, men and women uh, to get into the Congress to stop this guy, uh, we're all really going to pay a severe price in the future, especially our children. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to take the remaining time this morning, and I want to say this up front. Uh, this is really sad for me because uh, your friendship and your great uh, viewpoints are going to be missed on this program for a long time. Uh, I understand that you're taking off after today, and you're going to be gone for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving for a cross-country bicycle trip, and I want you all to know that uh, last year uh, I lost seven of my dear friends. My lifelong friends uh, all died on me. Uh, uh, I had uh, four, f five of, of cancer and two of heart attacks, and it was it created a terrible hole in my in my spirit, and uh, it's been rough on me. And of course, you all know my brother died two years ago, and my other brother Howard had a stroke. And so here I am looking at 69, it was my next birthday, and uh, I, I also uh, just want to get as much into my bucket list as I can get fulfilled, and so I promised myself that every summer I'm going to take off uh, two months to ride my bicycle, not only for the sheer pleasure of, of bicycling while I'm still able, but also for uh, talking to Americans across America as I take this cross-country bicycle trip. Uh, and also get more ideas and see conditions in cities and see conditions uh, uh, up close and personal. And so, um, yeah, I'll be gone for the next uh, seven weeks, and I'll be back with you around June, the, the, probably June 15th or June 10th. And uh, I'll have whole new perspectives, whole new ideas. Uh, and uh, and that's, that's what I'm doing with my, uh, so, so, I guess you call them the golden years, and I, I just want to be able to, to utilize them as much as possible realizing that, uh, you know, I've lived seven, I hope to live to, to be 80, so I've lived seven-eighths of my life. <laughs> uh, but if, uh, you know, uh, the key is I can't wait around and, and even, even figure on that. So I want to make the most of my summers. And what brings me the most joy is to ride my bicycle uh, across the country, and especially my beloved America. I'm, I'll, I'll meet more Americans and see more things. 
and do more things. And for me, that, that's the greatest joy of my life. Your entire family, uh, and it's a little hard for me to bu not bubble up on this, but your entire family, the brothers and everything, uh, it's been a privilege, a privilege for Deanne and I to know you and them. And uh, I wish you Godspeed, and I certainly hope all is safe and well for you. What area are you going to concentrate on? Uh, have you got a route already planned out? Yeah, actually, um, because uh, California right now is suffering from an extraordinary drought, extraordinary uh, immigration crises and problems, uh, I'm going to actually go down the middle of, of, uh, of Washington and Oregon and, uh, and uh, California uh, to see what we're doing to the entire West Coast, where you know that uh, California has 38 million people. And I, when I lived in San Diego back uh, a long time ago when I was a kid, uh, it, it was only 15 million. Now it's got 38 million and it's headed for 58 million. And virtually 98% of that is because of legal and Ill Ill illegal immigration. Uh, and, and so I, I'm, uh, I, I want to find out how bad the Central Valley is and the fact that they're losing millions of acres because millions of these immigrants are coming in, both legal and illegal, to California and just destroying California. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be my route uh, this year. Uh, and I'm, I, again, I just, I'm, I'm taking pictures everywhere and I'm writing notes uh, along the way and interviewing people along the way. And uh, we'll be able to be much wiser and, and sharper and bring even more perspective when I come back in June on your show. Let me ask you this. Is there an opportunity uh, while you're en route to the coast that maybe you could stop in and uh, spend the night and come on the air with us? Uh, prob probably not, because it's, it's, it's so many miles, are too, they're just way too much. And I, I actually have a, a time period, because I've got another friend who's got to get back, uh, and he's, he's riding with me. I was actually going to ride from Astoria, Oregon to Bar Harbor, Maine, but I couldn't get anybody to go with me. So, wow. so he said he'd go with me down the West Coast. So I said, I'll, I'll do that because it'd be fun to have a, a, you know, a friend to go with. But, you know, I, I will, I, you know, I could, I, I'll have a, a phone. I, I could call in and, and uh, from my phone, but I'm never sure I can get in there. So I don't want to leave, leave you hung up. Well, anything that you can tell us about on the way, because politically I'm sure you're going to learn a lot as to uh, the nature of what's happening with some of the nominations in both parties, and I'm sure you're going to probably hear a lot about uh, different policies with the EPA and the Obama administration that I think would be absolutely uh, a necessity to get on the air. So any time you want to call, you just go ahead. Well, uh, that that sounds great, uh, Zeb. Uh, actually, let let me. Um, the, the thing is, I don't want you to hung up with that. You know, a half hour you got to fill if I'm not in there. I'm not in the phone range. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would I would love to, and I I will I will uh, I'll I'll get my I'll I'll do that. I'll I'll call in. All right. Well, I want to just tell you this. Uh, both Deanne and I, we wish you God's blessings on your trip, and uh, we think a world of you and your family. So please take care, my friend. And I'll be in touch and call you before you leave, but uh, make sure that you're safe. Well, thank you. And also to every, uh, you know, American listening to the Zeb Bell Show, uh, please make sure that you, uh, I have left, I'm on part eight of uh, the Immigration Shutdown Now series, and they're going to publish one more, uh, eat, they're going to publish one every week at newswithviews.com, and the latest one is, is part seven of the enormous consumption, waste, and environmental destruction of raising, uh, you know, animals for food. Uh, it's very sobering. Uh, the next one's about overfishing our oceans. But again, if we add this 100 million more people to our country, uh, as we are right now on, on course to, to do, uh, we are facing unbelievably horrendous consequences on multiple levels. And this series at newswithviews.com will really educate you. And again, uh, www.capsweb.org. Become a member, empower yourself, and of course, numbersusa.org. And yeah, I'll be talking to you before I take off on Friday's episode. All right. Work some stuff out, and, and it'll be good for both. Uh, it'll be good. I, I, I think we could make something happen. All right. Frosty Woolridge Gold in Colorado. Again, go with God, be safe, and thank you for being on the program this morning. 
And thank you, Zach. Thank God you, God sir. You, my Very dear friend of mine, Frosty Woldridge, out of Golden, Colorado. And boy, I tell you what, he's got the drive. He's got the drive to get things done, and I really appreciate that. Hey, you know what? Steve O's at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn, celebrating 20 year anniversary. And they want to say thank you to you and you and you and you and you for all your support. And uh, by golly, I'll tell you what, they appreciate each and every one of their customers with their friendly servers and dedicated staff. And they say, come on in and have your favorite lunch or dinner during our 20 year anniversary. And remember, they make food just the way you like it at Stevo's, celebrating 20 years of outstanding food and service at 290 South 600 West of Hayburn. You stop in and see those good folks today. Really nice people. Also, I want to remind you that, oh my, if you're not ready for spring to get out of the office or get out of the house or just get out of here and go to the hills, I know the place you should go. And that's, of course, Let's Ride, Highway 24 between Rupert and Hayburn. And the number to call, 436-4771. This is where the fun is sold. I'll tell you what, they've got a great service department. Now, for those of you that have been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, as to getting your ATVs over there and getting them serviced so you're ready to go this spring, uh 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 I told you, you better give them a call and get your bikes in there and make sure everything's taken care of. And then don't forget, too, they've got the great, Can-Am ATV side-by-side rebates for this year, and they've got all the four-wheelers, the dirt bikes, street bikes, they've got fantastic accessories, all of that and more. Over to Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and Hayburn, yep, that is where the fun is is sold. Let's ride. Oh my, let's also remind you too about our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Really, really nice people serving you at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. And I suggest you get over there and talk to them about all your insurance coverage needs, whether it's life insurance, whether it's health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. They are there to serve you. And don't forget, the number to call to set up an appointment, 436-4424. 436-4424. Dean Cameron, Todd Siemens, dedicated and responsive to your needs in serving you. Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 and Rupert number again 436-4424. We'll have our next guest on the program momentarily. I just want to remind you, oh my goodness, you heard me last hour. The big truckload sale at Redder Showcase. My goodness, can you save money on washers and dryers? They got a Mana Duo washer and dryer for just $377 each. $377 each. What are you waiting for? Plus you get free soap, free tide. My goodness sakes, at Redder Showcase. It's a big, big truckload sale. And you can save money. 12 months, same as cash, at Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland Avenue in Burley. You stop in and check out the truckload sale today. Let's go to the phone lines right now. And I'm very blessed and honored to have this lovely lady on my program, Carrie Kupek with Alliance Defending Freedom. Good morning, Carrie. How are you? Hey, how are you doing this morning? You know, Carrie, I've said this in the past, and I'm going to say it again right now. You know what kind of stories are going to get me up and fighting <laughs> mad, and boy, did you hit me with a couple of dandies here this morning. Uh, starting things off with the Alliance Defending Freedom having to sue the Internal Revenue Service for mm-hmm. what they're doing against churches. Now, I don't want to steal your thunder, so explain that story to us. <laughs> so this past summer, uh, the IRS struck a secret deal with the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and the Freedom From Religion Foundation released this press statement saying that they had settled the IRS um, and that the settlement basically contained new rules and procedures for, quote-unquote, investigating churches to see if they had violated the Johnson Amendment. Now, as you know, the Johnson Amendment... The amendment that talks about uh, certain nonprofits and churches uh, not being essentially allowed to exercise the First Amendment rights uh, from the pulpit or in their nonprofit capacity. The Johnson Amendment is an issue all, in and of itself altogether. But what the IRS said was that, I, that I'm sorry, the Freedom from Religion Foundation said the IRS had not been enforcing the Johnson Amendment against these churches. 
they they formed this secret deal, and then the I and supposedly the IRS said they were adopting new procedures and policies to go after churches, and there were 99 churches in particular they were looking at. Well, Alliance Defending Freedom, we submitted a we filed a FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act request, saying, "Hey, we want to look at those documents. These are public documents. We want to see one, who are these 99 churches, and two, what are these new policies and procedures? This is public information, and we certainly have a right to know." And the IRS has repeatedly stonewalled our request. They missed. They have missed all of their statutory deadlines. They have extended their own deadline multiple times, and they failed to produce documents. Now, these documents already exist because the Freedom From Religion Foundation themselves have them. So it's not a matter of them not being out there. They're there, and they just refuse to hand them over. So we just filed a lawsuit. Judicial Watch is representing us. So we're actually the client uh, being represented by Judicial Watch and uh, demanding that the IRS let us and the American people know what they're up to, especially if they're going to go after churches in this way. Let me ask you, Carrie, now this gets a little bit dark and murky here. Your lawsuit is against, and, and answer my question with a brief answer, and then i got a follow-up question. You're against, a lawsuit against the IRS, is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay, and the reason I say that it's a little murky, my goodness, our own Congress couldn't get the information from the IRS. Our own Congress couldn't get Lois Lerner to yeah. tell the truth. How in the world are you going to butt heads with the IRS and expect to get anything from these people that have lied and cheated the American public for the last how many years? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And it's, the IRS needs to be held to the same standards and guidelines, really, as any other agency. I can't even imagine, you know, as an attorney, telling a judge or a court, hey, I'm just going to extend my deadline to file my brief. Hope you're okay with that. And then not produce it at all without any consequences. And this is the kind of the shenanigans the IRS, like you said, perpetually engages in. And <laughs> it's, it's just this IRS, they just seem oblivious to federal court orders to provide full information. This is a huge problem. Like you said, the IRS thinks it can toy with federal court, Congress, the American people. We've seen throughout the Obama administration this repeated hiding of information. It's sort of a joke when President Obama has talked about this being, you know, this transparent administration when in fact it's the extreme opposite. And so if the IRS is going to form this secret deal with Freedom From Religion Foundation where they adopt new policies and procedures to go after churches, to investigate them, and um, you know, and, and to have an actual list of 99, well the public deserves to know what that is, and it is public information, and the IRS is legally required to make that uh, th those documents available. This is, I'm going to save this sheet this morning from this program because I am absolutely intrigued as to the Alliance Defending Freedom. I know a lot of the attorneys, and God bless you, you've been so helpful on this program. I will do anything I can to help support or promote anything you're doing. The IRS is acting like some kind of a Gestapo. They're acting like some kind of a mafia. They're acting like they're above the law, and they are dictating to the common uh, folk of the United States of America like there's some kind of a supreme being and somebody, somebody has got to take them down. I agree. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this lawsuit because, like I said, these documents exist. Freedom of Religion Foundation have them. Uh, this, this is public information. They are legally required to let us and the American people know what exactly is in the deal, especially the churches who would like to know if they're going to be, you know, quote unquote, investigated, so to speak. It's, it's ridiculous. They certainly should know which rules they're supposed to be playing by, uh, which, and that in and of itself is an entirely other issue that's disturbing. And so, so we'll see what happens. You know, maybe we should take just a moment here, though, Carrie, and explain that the Johnson Amendment, uh, it mm -hmm. actually authorizes and gives more power to the IRS to come in and basically tell preachers, ministers, uh, and church leaders what the sermons are going to be or what they're not going to be. Isn't that correct? Yes, it's very correct. The Johnson Amendment essentially conditions tax exempt status on the surrender of constitutionally protected freedoms, the freedom of speech. When a pastor takes the pulpit, that doesn't mean that he gives up his 
First Amendment freedom to speak, just like it doesn't give up, he doesn't give up his uh, Fourth Amendment protection against illegal search and seizure. That's crazy. Uh, what kind of job or what kind of, say, pastoral or nonprofit job uh, out there should be that, oh, if you take it, by the way, we're just going to have to eliminate a bunch of your constitutional freedoms. That's ridiculous. And, and that's what the Johnson Amendment essentially does. And uh, the IRS has this history of vague and uneven treatment. They kind of hold it over the heads of these churches. So pastors become intimidated, and they're essentially bullied in this gray way into not speaking, into not exercising their freedom to speak, which they are fully, obviously, allowed and protected to do under the Constitution. And so that's a problem in and of itself, and that's why we, we have, at Alliance Defending Freedom, has that Pulpit Freedom Sunday initiative where we encourage pastors to speak from the pulpit um, about issues of politics and, and those matters because they don't condition their First Amendment freedom to speak when they take the pulpit. So that's the first issue. But the second issue is, so now to add insult to injury, not only is that out there, not only does that I, the IRS vaguely and um, unevenly enforce this against churches, now on top of it, there's this new supposed policy and procedure, uh, and there's 99 churches in particular, and that they won't that they won't reveal what it is or who these churches are. Mm. It's a big problem, and so that's why we're suing the IRS. It goes without saying that if we don't stop this, I mean, if we don't ram this truck into the wall right now and stop it, uh, down the road, whether it's a year, two years, five years, whatever, the various aspects of the Bible and biblical teaching, whether it's Romans 127 or whatever it might be, would be possibly open and subject to curtailment of even being spoken about at a church service. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, it's, it's certainly, when you see such uh, blatant um, just attacks against uh, people in ministry, their freedom to speak and, and their freedom to associate and their freedom to you know, express their political views, yeah, one can only imagine what's down the road. It's certainly disturbing. And again, the IRS is this, as this agency, they need, to, they need to follow the rules. They're not exempt from the law, and they need to stop acting like that. So we'll see what this lawsuit produces. Uh, it's, they do, they're doing a complete disservice, not only to the churches and, you know, say, us as client, but the American people. Absolutely. Where's the transparency? It's, it's very concerning, so we'll see what happens. Now, the other story, when I read this, I just wanted to jump up, get in my pickup, and drive to Atlanta and defend the fire chief. Please tell us what happened with uh, the Atlanta, Georgia fire chief and the possibility of discrimination uh, against the fire chief for what his religious viewpoints were. Sure. Uh, the fire chief, this is Kelvin Cochran. He is, he was the fire chief of Atlanta. This is an outstanding individual. Mm -hmm. He was originally a fire chief in Shreveport, Louisiana. He rose to the ranks there, and in 2000, and then he went over to Atlanta, became the fire chief there. In 2009, President Obama appointed him to the highest fire chief position in the United States. But the mayor of Atlanta missed him so much, begged him to come back. Uh, Chief Cochran went back to Atlanta, took up his duties. He won awards. He had won uh, Fire Chief of the Year just a couple years ago. He did something. He was so effective in what he did. He actually, uh, by his actions, and, how, and he actually lowered fire insurance rates for the entire city of Atlanta. And this is, this is the kind of outstanding fire chief this man was. Well, on his own time for a men's Bible study that he leads, he wrote a 162-page book about uh, self-condemnation issues and, and issues that men deal with. It was for a men's Bible study. And on those 162 pages, he devoted a few paragraphs to issues of sexuality and, and issues that men deal with and essentially just lifted from the Bible what the Bible says about sexuality in general and the different aspects of it. Well, um, and, he, and he did this. He actually had gone and, and, he had let, and he had let his superiors know that he was writing this book. Obviously, it was in his free time. It wasn't really a big deal. And uh, he went ahead and did so. Well, someone uh, talked to a council member of Atlanta and said that they were offended or wanted to point out that there was a few paragraphs in this book that he wrote on his personal time for this men's Bible study that dealt with sexuality because it also meant, talked about homosexuality and God's design for marriage. 
the next thing Chief Cochran knew, he was suspended. Oh, my. And um, they looked to see uh, if he had been discriminating against people because of his views that he expressed, or the biblical views that he expressed in this book. After the investigation was over, they found that he had never discriminated on the basis of you know, sexual orientation or anything like that whatsoever, but they fired him anyway. And uh, we have since filed a lawsuit on his behalf against the city of Atlanta and against the mayor uh, for firing this man for his thoughts that he took from the Bible in a book on his own free time. And uh, the city just responded to our lawsuit, and they've, they've asked the court to dismiss the lawsuit, saying that uh, essentially he should be fired, that his, his thoughts um, are not acceptable to the city. And so and, and that's essentially their argument. And uh, so we are obviously going to sound we're going to move forward with this lawsuit. We'll see what the court says. But the reality is, you know, tolerance is a two-way street. And the city of Atlanta doesn't seem to realize that. That must apply to people of all different viewpoints, not just those who agree with the government's beliefs. And, again, no discrimination. There was no problem. This is a highly acclaimed, lauded fire chief. You know, said, you know, he was the highest position in this country. And because he expressed opinions in a private book, they fired him. I am going to be very blunt here, Carrie, and uh, I'm going to say this, that for those of us that are Christian, for those of us that believe that the Word of God in the Bible is the path to eternal life and something that needs to be followed every day, and to let mankind denigrate us and try to uh, remove us from our jobs if we don't believe with their secular thinking, it's time to stand up and fight back back because I just think too many people are being cowed into the corner and like in this fire chief's case he is being forced if he wants to keep his job into taking sensitivity training he's lost his first amendment rights he's lost his biblical rights this whole country is going in the gutter yeah and what do you think is the incredible like you're alluding to double standard there so the city is saying that Chief Cochran's religious views on marriage and sexual morality, quote unquote, disrupted the workplace because some employees might object to his views, oh both justifying and firing. However, what the city failed to mention and discuss is that there are many city employees who share Calvin Cochran's religious beliefs and who object to the mayor and councilman's views on this. So under this new concocted standard, you know, the mayor and the council members, they really should lose their jobs because there, there are plenty of people who agree with Calvin Cochran. And so this utter disregard for his constitutional rights and double, blatant double standards, it's reflect the law, and it's completely disturbing for people of faith. What do you think in a nutshell is going to happen with this case, Gary? You know, it's, it's hard to say. We would hope that the city and mayor, um, Mayor Reed, we we'll take a real good look at the First Amendment and the Constitution and realize that they are discriminating uh, terribly against mm -hmm. Chief Cochran, that this man who has done so much good for the city of Atlanta, who did so much good really for this country, uh, has they're completely disregarding and trampling on his First Amendment protected rights. So Absolutely. we hope they do the right thing, and we'll see how this lawsuit plays out. Absolutely. I tell you, Carrie, there is no end to uh, an upheaval of right and wrong in this country. And I certainly want to tell you how much I appreciate the Alliance Defending Freedom, and especially you. Uh, how can my listeners please check out this story and other stories that we've talked about? Give us uh, the websites, etc. They can go to AllianceDefendingFreedom.org. Or they can go to ADFmedia.org, take a look at the legal documents and some of the analysis. Kerry, God bless you, and I mean that. And thank you so much for a wonderful job. I'll look forward to next Monday. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. You too, Bishop. Take care. Wow. I mean, we've lost our right to speak out. We've lost our right to believe and have faith in our religion and believe in God and Jesus and practice what the Bible says. And the government is coming in and trying to squash individuals like this fire chief. It, it's unbelievable to me. And we sit there like a bunch of sheep and we don't fight back. We don't fight back. Oh, it's time for the weather. 
and the weather is brought to you by Mad River Laser. This lady, Nicole, and everybody over there is so fantastic. They can make anything. She can draw anything. I mean, whether it's business promotional items or your your shirts, your jackets, your sweatshirts, uh, pens for your business, buck knives engraved uh, with anything you want engraved on them. Uh, she's just fantastic. So please get a hold of Mad River Laser today. I mean, I'm going to get her on the air one of these days, and she's going to talk about how they now offer online t uh, online t-shirt designing, where you can upload your own art and use their templates, and you can design a t-shirt and have it ready later that day. My goodness, I'm telling you, they are amazing. They are way ahead of the game. Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert. Number to call 436-2293. Mad River Laser. Here now, Michael Rogers Weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zeb at the Ranch. Yes, there's rain in the forecast. How do I know that? Well, you should know. I've only been doing this for the last seven years. Uh, it's going to be breezy today. So the quick quiz, because it's going to be breezy with a wind advisory all the way to 9 o'clock tonight. Where is the storm coming from? Uh, this particular one is something that you are familiar with, have been for so many years. Got an area of low pressure up there by Vancouver, Canada. Cold front extending all the way down into California. We should be hitting rain by Tuesday, Tuesday night. So to get there, you got some wind for today. Daytime temperatures still in the 50s and 60s, but otherwise, uh, we're going to be clouds. Let's see rain for this week, and we're going to come out of it, but it's going to be short-lived because we got a series of rainstorms coming through the Magic Valley. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you've got. All right, Michael, thank you. Brought to us uh, by our friends, Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert, Nicole and Alex Pratt, and their staff outstanding with all the uh, promotional items for your business. Uh, they just do a wonderful job. Please stop in right on the square. In Rupert, Mad River Laser. Outstanding. Um, let's see. This is a little story. I was going to get on the first hour, and I did not have time. Are you ready to listen to this? Obama is absolutely doing all he can to promote global warming and climate change in the last, how many days has he got last, uh, let's see, 647 days in office. He is going to do everything he can to uh, try to have the EPA impose upon us, try to have his uh, laws and regulations uh, imposed upon us. He's going to do everything he can to create an atmosphere of man-made global warming and or climate change. Well, President Obama, if you didn't read this, uh, check it out in USA Today last week on Friday, came out and blamed global warming on his daughter Malia's asthma. Now, this is where the plot really thickens, because the article was written by James Robbins, and uh, he did some research on this, and uh, he noted that uh, President Obama's one daughter, Malia, did have asthma, but what was never said by the president, even though Obama came out and said, oh, it's got to be global warming that's causing her asthma, it was never mentioned by our illustrious president, that smoking and secondhand smoke is one of the greatest, biggest contributors to asthma. I can speak for that myself. As an asthmatic, I could not announce a rodeo with anybody that smoked a cigarette around me, or a cigar, or a pipe, whatever. It would cause asthma immediately, and I had to ask people not to smoke around me. And this man, the President of the United States, was a chain smoker for years. Aha! Yes! When Malia was a little girl. And for this man, in all his phoniness, to come out and be highfalutin and say, well, global warming caused Malia's asthma is a lie. It's a deceptive lie. And I just want to give kudos to this writer, James Robbins, for pointing out that President Obama lied and uh, tried to blame global warming or climate change on his daughter's asthmatic attacks. 
absolutely ridiculous. And in the article he mentions, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, tobacco smoke is one of the most common asthma triggers. If you have asthma, it's important that you avoid exposure to secondhand smoke. There you go. <laughs> if there's any culprit here, if there's anybody guilty, it would very much be the president and how he mistreated his own child by smoking around his daughters and possibly creating the asthmatic attacks that his daughter Malia had. Not in any stretch of the imagination global warming or climate change. Shame on the president for being a phony and a liar in this situation. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Don't forget to streamline precision. 120 South, 100 West of Burley, right next to the Dot Foods. You can call Tim Vaughn for your estimates. He'll give them to you for anything you need built on your farm, the home, and the ranch. I'll tell you what, they can get the job done. Right now, they're really doing a lot with on-the-farm grain storage, with grain bins, and they have the authorized dealership in Sukup, Chief, Bailey and new core buildings and I want to mention this too Tim and I talked last week they've got the equipment at Streamline Precision to handle all your dirt hauling they've got those great big side dump trucks oh the big boys and they also have all the rigs for handling your big farm equipment rigs maybe you're done in this field of spring planting and you need to get all the big outfits over to another area they've got the equipment to help you so just give them a call uh, Streamline Precision is a family of uh, companies providing construction, excavation, and fabrication services. They will help and they can help. Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley. The number to call, 431-7314. You give them a call today. All right, give me a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I'd like to hear your opinion. You know... The president is absolutely, pardon the expression, hell-bent on uh, creating as much of a dilemma as he can, and unverified uh, dilemma, to create more of a climate change or global warming atmosphere. And you can bet in the remaining 647 days, we are, as the American public, going to be suffering through a malaise of in, uh, kind of concocted problems problems from the EPA and straight from the Oval Office. I do not trust this man. I do not believe in this man or his administration. And things are going to get a lot worse. Why? Because he wants total control. Give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Give me a call. By the way, Marco Rubio also entered the presidential race. Uh, the media, what did they do? Right away they attacked him. Right away they ran him down, just the same as they did Cruz and others. But when Hillary announced yesterday that she was going to run officially as a Democrat for president, why they just, like I said last hour, bubbled over like cheap champagne. And they're so excited to anoint her queen of the Oval Office. It's absolutely disgusting. By the way, don't forget the Chadwick Sports Grill. Oh, my. Every day they've got specials over there at the Chadwick. And in addition to all the great menu items, today they're going to have sweet and spicy crispy chicken melt served with choice of side or super salad. You are going to love this. I mean, that sounds really good. Sweet and spicy crispy chicken melt today at the Chadwick Sports Grill. Always great food, great service, really a neat environment in there with all the sports memorabilia at the, chick <laughs> at the chicken melt. Yeah. 
at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. You stop in and see those good folks today. Mm, that sounds delicious. Also want to remind you, coming up next hour at 10.06, we're going to have Christopher Malagisi with the Conservative Book Club telling us how the books earn the right to be on that top ten. And then at 10.30 this morning, we're going to have Jeff Dickens with the Media Research Center. And uh, we've got a lot of things coming up next hour. Don't go away. Right now, we're going to turn it back over to our main studios. The news is next. I'll be back in six. Oh, my. Here we go. Last hour. Mm-mm. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, and our major sponsor, your magic, holy smokes, the call to the race is going on. Old Wheels has got everything taken care of. Uh, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Stop in and see them today. The very best, your Les Schwab Tire Centers. And don't forget, also we want to say thanks to some of our great advertisers. Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. You stop in, locally owned and operated, Western Waste Services. Give them a call, 734-6969. And also our thanks go to Valley White Home and Ranch. Need fishing equipment? They've got a great big department for all your fishing needs at 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Everything for the farm, the home, and the ranch. Don't forget on Thursdays, Vicky's Country Garden, and they're located at 185 South, 600 West of Paul. We have a program on the air at about uh, 1030 called Gardening for Idiots, named after me because I'm not a very good gardener. And Vicky's Country Garden, they will answer all your gardening questions. You can send those to Zeb at the Ranch at Hotmail.com, and we'll have them ready on the program. Vicky's Country Garden in Paul. You give her a call or stop in for all your gardening needs, 438-5663. And, two, I want to remind you, before we get our guest on the air this morning, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. They they have done so much to help me, and the last couple of weeks we've had some problems with the schedule, but this week I'm going to try to get back over there and start up again. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. They will always help you to get back to feeling and being yourself. You better believe it, all the sports medicine, all the exercises, very, very educated, friendly staff that knows all about what to do for you. They We've got the hydrotherapy pool with the treadmill, absolutely the best. Nick Greenwell and his entire staff at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Really nice people. Um, let's go to the phone line right now, and we're going to be visiting with a gentleman. And I'm going to say his name, and then he can correct me, but he is the editor of the Conservative Book Club, and it's Chris Malagisi. Is that right? That's great. You got it. I usually get butchered pretty bad. Well, I promise I won't butcher it. And uh, one of my best friends in college was Italian, and we used to go back to his house and eat basta bazool and a lot of wine. And uh, so I'm a little bit familiar with Italian customs and pronunciation. So nice to have you on the program, Chris. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. I'm happy to be on. Tell me a little bit about the Conservative Book Club. What is it? Tell my listeners what it is and what it tries to do. Sure. The Conservative Book Club is uh, essentially a nationwide community of conservative book lovers all across the country. It's a one-stop shop resource for those looking for trusted conservative-themed book recommendations, reviews, and bestseller rankings. You can almost kind of think of it as a Goodreads for the right or the Oprah Winfrey Book Club for the right, as we jokingly refer to it. Um, but it's a, it's a nationwide community. It's been around for about 50 years now. Uh, we done the old traditional book model. If any of your listeners have ever done one of the old book models where you buy so many books and you get so many throughout the year, etc., we don't do that anymore. Um, to serve and meet the needs of our members, we've relaunched a digital iteration recently to allow members to engage um, in a nationwide community of across the country where people can post comments, rank books, create their own conservative bookshelves, can uh, learn about different new releases and sneak previews um, that we've got coming out with BookWise throughout the country, as well as we're doing a bestseller book list every single week, a conservative book bestseller list so folks can see accurate real-time sales-driven data on which books are, are selling out there. 
So we've got a, we've got a lot of for everybody. It's uh, conservativebookclub.com. All right. Now, Chris, I, I want to stop right there, and I want you. I also noticed in your resume that was sent to me that you are a professor at American University, where you teach the history of the conservative movement. Now, I want I want to make a statement, and then I want you to respond to it. Is conservatism uh, in this country? Is it just with its heels on the edge of the cliff, and somebody's going to push it off? Is it about ready to fall into the abyss? Uh, what are your thoughts about conservatives and the conservative movement? Is it a dying breed right now this morning? I, I wouldn't say that at all. I actually think it's more alive than it's ever ever been. I think Barack Obama has been the greatest gift to the conservative movement. Um, it, just look at the recent elections from 2014. Uh, there's obviously um, a rise of conservatism, or at least folks that want to have a fiscally prudent government, a government that respects the law, the Constitution, and traditional values. And I think a, I think a lot of people are yearning for that. And just, all you got to do is just look at the GOP. GOP candidates that are running for president are announcing, what are they all trying to do? They're trying to claim that they're the conservative that's running. Um, so I think this is a great time for conservatism as they're, uh, we've got a lot of good people out there doing good things and, and uh, the ideas are still winning. So we, we need to get some political leadership in there to espouse it, but I, don't, I do not think it's dead yet. I don't think it's on its heels. What do you tell your class? What do you tell your students, though, Chris? When when this uh, nation and the news media seem to be uh, already appointing and anointing Hillary Clinton as the queen of the Oval Office on the Democratic side and already seem to be pushing a Jeb Bush on the Republican side against Hillary in this next election. I will come right out and say that I think if that happens, you're going to see the lowest voter turnout ever in the history of the presidential election because people are fed up to the gills with the name Clinton and Bush. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you. I, I think that in a, no one wants a political dynasty, and in a year where we have uh, so many good candidates that are that are running, at least on the GOP GOP side, you would hope that we would have much more of, of a choice and better selection uh, than just to revert to another Bush. But um, what I tell the students in my classes is basically the conservative movement. It, it's not a political party. You know, you got the Republican Party. And you've got the conservative movement, and they're they're two different entities. While the Republican Party thinks of the here and then now, the conservative movement has a little bit more longer view of things and realize that you know just because you win an election is great, but that it doesn't end there. You you've got to keep on pushing the needle forward a little bit uh, to to get where it needs to go, and and that's kind of been the history. It it took the conservatives from the days of Bill Buckley in the 1950s all the way to 30 years to get to. Ronald Reagan, um, and from Ronald Reagan now, I mean, we're it's a little bit better than it was back in, in its infancy, but um, we're still not done. There's still other things that we need to do, and and it's not just politics, Ed. I think a lot of it has to do with the culture mm -hmm. and the art. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're trying to do with Conservative Book Club is engage on those type of topics that usually um, folks on the center right don't really like to engage in or just scoff at it because it's just Hollywood and you know that's a bunch of liberals, whatever. But this, we have to engage on, on cultural stuff just as much as we do political in order to have a long-lasting effect. I think you will agree with me, and I'm not quite sure how to phrase this, Chris, but I think when you talk about conservatism, you're also talking about family values, you're talking about getting up on Sunday morning and going to church as a family, we're talking about the values that really made this country great. And we're seeing such an attack on Christianity right now, and unfortunately, Christians are turning the other cheek and they're going back and forth like a revolving door instead of getting involved and standing up for themselves. Wouldn't you agree that that's happening? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are so many uh, church-going people in this country uh, that uh, are looking and seeing what's going on to their religious freedoms around the country, especially in recent weeks, and they they feel that they're being um, they're being penalized, that they're they're being attacked, and it's okay to attack Christians. You know, you you can do that because that's okay because the mainstream media says so, and that fits into their narrative. And it's a shame because 
you know, knowing our country's history and our founding traditions, um, it's not the political sector where we, it should be the basis of our foundation. It's our civil society. It's our churches, families, schools, uh, in local communities. That That's the bedrock, and that's what we should be uh, lifting up. But, yeah, for it, it's, it's very scary when we see these type of things happen where religious freedom rights are being... Um, uh, are, there, there's a group, there are groups, secularists that are going after them, and uh, we've got to stand up and we've got to fight. And in accordance with that last statement that I made to you, uh, I see that Dennis Prager and the book The Ten Commandments is in the top ten on the conservative book list. Uh, talk a little bit about that, would you please? Oh, it's, it's, it's great. A wonderful book by Dennis Prager called The Ten Commandments, Still the Best Moral Code. And uh, he's, for people who may not know him, he's a national syndicated radio host and he's one of the best out there. And he has a book uh, about the Ten Commandments and he made our top ten conservative bestseller list, which I was talking about before uh, last week at number nine. Um, and it's, it's an overview of the Ten Commandments, probably the Easter, Passover celebrations. I helped to get on the list, but what's great about that is, you know, the Ten Commandments are 3,000 years old. Uh, that's that's wonderful that people still have an interest in that and still want to know um, how the Ten Commandments can still be applied to today's world. And that's what I think what Prager is trying to accomplish, and it, it is. It's a great book. I was uh, more than surprised when I looked at the top ten on the bestseller list right now, and two authors own four spots on that top ten and that's Bill O'Reilly and Rush Limbaugh. Tell us about that. Sure, sure. And I, uh, for our conservative book bestseller list and how we come up with our numbers, it's, it's the most um, transparent, accurate, up-to-date, sales-driven information. We contracted with Nielsen BookScan. They are probably the most, 85% of the market of books that are sold in this country are reported to them. And we make our list based on those actual numbers. So that's how we come up with these numbers. But yeah, there are, uh, Bill O'Reilly has two books and Rush Limbaugh has three books on the list right now. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Bill O'Reilly is in, uh, in second place with his book Killing Patton and third place with Killing Jesus, and they've been up at the top for quite some time, and uh, he's, he's killing it, no pun, atten- no pun intended. Uh, and Rush Limbaugh, he had his three books, his children's books technically, Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims, Rush Revere and the First Patriots, and Rush Revere and the American Revolution top in at four, five, and seven. And, you know, it's great that th- these ideas are getting out there and people are reading them, and, and yeah, so... Uh, they made the list this week, but there's always a little movement. Rush only had one book on it last uh, the week before, so anything's possible. I will say that I just last night finished one of the books on the bestseller list, and that was the one by Mike Huckabee, God, Guns, Grits, and Gravy, an excellent book. How would you find it? I thought it was great, too. It's, it's got a lot of staying power as well. It's been on the list now ever since, it's, um, ever since it came out. And obviously Huckabee is going to be a player within the GOP primary uh, this year if he decides to run and won Iowa back in 2008. So he's, he's definitely got a real good shot at it. But, yeah, I thought it, was a, it, it outlined a good outlook on the country and where he wanted to take it. And I uh, had a few policy prescriptions in there, but also talked about faith and being how important that is to, to society and how we need to remember that we have to focus on that as well and um, and not let the secularists win. So what did you think? I thought it was an excellent book. There were a couple of points in there, very, very few that I didn't entirely agree with, maybe his stand on various issues. But I like Mike Huckabee. He's a straight from the hip guy, and I think he uh, the book deserves to be on the top ten. And I want to talk about another book that um, I, I'm really high on the family because they're outspoken, they're honest, and they're real. And that's the Robinson family. Um, I have right here on my desk, as a matter of fact, a daily devotional that was written by the Robinsons, primarily Willie and his dad Phil and, and some of the other members of the family for adults. But now I see that Willie's wife, Corey, has a Duck Commander devotional for kids. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, this is uh, another great book, too. We were happily surprised that it made the list. 
Uh, number six is Duck Commander Devotions for Kids by Corey Robertson, who is the daughter-in-law of Phil Robertson from the show Duck Dynasty. Right. And basically, it's a, it's a great book. It's written for kids uh, about daily devotionals that they can very easily understand relating to family, to school, to friends, and anything that you can think of. And it's just it's very engaging and colorful, and it seems to be doing, like Rush Limbaugh, these, these children's books, really there's a, quite a niche here that they're filling. And uh, I'm surprised not more people are doing this, but I guess with the Robertson name, that does help help out, get you on the list. Let me ask you this, Chris. Uh, how accessible is the weekly update of this conservative book list, and where can people find it? It's on conservativebookclub.com. It's uh, the second tab in, and they can see it every week. We update it every Wednesday as soon as the numbers come out. So anybody can go on there any week, and they can check it out and even see previous weeks if they want to see how books are faring over time. And what about books themselves? Do you see uh, people increasing their taking the time to read books? Is it uh, becoming kind of a lost art to find the time and sit down and really yeah. read? What's going on with book sales and especially book reading? You know, that's a great question. You know, you would think in the era of e-books and Kindles and all that, that you would see a downturn in books where actually it's just the opposite. I think people, uh, they're still craving um, a book in their hand. They still find it interesting. And books still matter in this country. I, I You know, the books that Americans read can directly or indirectly influence their perception of current events, history, or politics. And because of that, um, it can also help to direct and lead a nation. For the, for the most part, most Americans don't get interested in politics through politics. You know, they're, they're typically inspired by a book they read, a song they heard, or, or a movie they watched. American Sniper is a great example mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. Because of this movie, we're having a national debate about the meaning of patriotism, the military, and America's involvement in the world. So I think, yeah, books are still very critical and very important in getting ideas out there. And again, this goes back to what I was saying before about... Uh, the battles that conservatives need to face is not just political, it's also cultural. We have to engage and, and be able to make our case that way. You must have been uh, feeling very warm and fuzzy as to what happened at the University of Michigan when, first of all, the university said, oh, no, we won't show American Sniper. But thanks to Jim Harbaugh, the new football coach, uh, and the students rallying behind him, yes, they did, and yes, they will. They did watch American Sniper and it was not going to be censored off that playlist what did you think about that I, I think it's it's a it's a victory. I, it, you know, I don't understand why anybody would want to censor a story like this. I think you know both commonsensical sides um, can come together and have a great debate about the meaning of the the different meanings that come out of this movie. Again, mm -hmm. what defines patriotism? What is the role of, mili of the military and our involvement in the world? And it, it's worthy to have those type of debates. And why some any school would want to censor something like that? Supposedly in the, you know, the edu our education laboratories were supposed to be able to speak freely and talk about these types of topics. Why anybody would try to censor it is, 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 um, is discerning. And I think it's part of a larger trend uh, that's going on at, some of the, at the university levels around the country. And uh, good, for, good for Michigan. That's, that's great. That's wonderful they were able to do that. Now, you're also the president of the uh, Young Conservatives Movement. And uh, just give me a short synopsis synopsis here. When you look out into the audience and you're talking to people your age and the younger generation, I'm an old fogey. I'm 67 years old, but I'll tell you what, is there hope for the young generation and are there a lot of kids that still think a lot of the values and morals in this country? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think that as I mentioned before, conservative ideas are, are very popular and resonating with, with students right now, at least the ones that I see on my campus, too. And let, let me give you a few examples. Um, the issue of life, for instance, is one of those issues that, you know, a lot of the culture we, you might think is, go, is going in a leftward lurch lately, but in the issue of life, most 18 to 29-year-olds are actually more pro-life, and it keeps going up every year. That's, that's a great thing. That's that people are starting to recognize that 
um, life is an important issue and there are a lot more pro-life groups that are starting to pop up all over the place and that's a good thing. I think there's a lot of students too that are looking at the job climate that they're facing when they finish up college and a lot of them aren't really thrilled by it and I think a lot of them when they get their first paycheck and they see, well, wait a minute, where did 30, 40, 50% of my paycheck go? And they start, they start looking at those issues and they start really thinking about, okay, what really goes into uh, the budget, our taxes, where are they going, what's going on with it? And they've looked at the, this administration and seen you know, almost, well, will probably be $8 trillion, if not more, um, in our national debt increase. And a lot of them are questioning that. I think there is a great opportunity for young people to, um, to 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 grow with conservatism, I and mean, we've got a lot. Of, the GOP has a lot of younger candidates that are relating and reaching out to them, like you know Rand Paul or even Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio today. So mm-hmm. I, I think there there's a great future for conservatism. I enjoyed having you on the program, editor of the Conservative Book Club, Mr. Chris Malagisi, and thank you, Chris. God bless, and come back anytime. I'll look forward to it. Thanks, Ab. Take care. It. Thank you very much. Very interesting young man, and uh, I'm going to try to remember every week to uh, get the top ten of the uh, uh, conservative bestseller list and put it on the radio for you. And I'll just give you a quick rundown of these books. Uh, American Sniper, Killing Patton, Killing Jesus, Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims, Rush Revere and the First Patriots, Duck Commander Devotion for Kids, Rush Revere and the American Revolution, God's Gu- God Guns, Grits and Gravy by Mike Huckabee, the one we were talking about, uh, The Ten Commandments, by Dennis Prager, and I'll try to update that every week on this program. Oh my goodness, i got to pay some bills here. I want to remind you that on Thursdays we have a program called... Cache County School Days. And it's brought to you, and uh, we really appreciate these good folks, Child's World and Ambulatory Surgery Center. At a Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley, they have hundreds and hundreds of happy, bright spring dresses and play clothes. And they've got the Buster Brown clothes. And they've got all the baby material. They've got all the cribs. They've got everything, and gift wrapping is free at a Child's World, 1308 Overland. Overland in Burley, along with Ambulatory Surgery Center. More and more people are having their outpatient surgery procedures performed by outstanding doctors at the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Burley, right across from the hospital. If you need a life-saving colonoscopy or tonsils removed, carpal tunnel, surgery for your hand, uh, whatever, please, I urge you to call the number, 677-8888. 677-8888 Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Burley along with the Child's World in Burley bringing you school days in Cassia County. Some really good folks. We are going to take a little break for a few minutes and send it back over to our main studios and uh, before I do that though, hold on a second wheels I want to remind everybody about uh, Dan Tracy called me the other day and said the Elmo Boy Scouts are going to have a turkey shoot coming up on April 25th, Saturday at uh, 10 to 2 p.m. located by the cemetery up in Elba. Lots and lots of prizes. Put that on your to-do list. There you go. I'll tell you more later. Right now, over to our main studio. I'll be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, thank you very much and welcome back to our last half hour. And before we get our next guest on the phone, I want to remind you about Streamline Precision, a company that has uh, three companies, actually, construction, excavation, and fabrication services. 
services, a big family serving you. All you have to do is to get an estimate. It's call Tim Vaughn at 431-7314. Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley, right next to Dot Foods. As I've been telling you, they are right now currently building the brand new Funk Dairy straight south of me in Murtaugh. They can put up anything you need, like grain bins for on-the-farm storage. They're an authorized dealer in Sioux Cub, Chief Balin, and Nucor Buildings. And one of the other things that Tim wanted me to uh, tell you is that they have all the big equipment, the big equipment, to handle your dirt hauling needs with the big side dump trucks. And like I said last hour, if you need like tractors or whatever hauled from one location to another, they've got the big rigs for hauling your farm equipment and rigs and heavy equipment from one location to the other. So please give them a call for estimates and find out what they can do to serve you. Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley. The number to call, 431-7314. Let's go to the phone line right now. And with us uh, from the Media Research Center is the Deputy Research Director, Jeff Dickens. Jeff, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, Zeph. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a treat to have you on the program. It's been a while. Um, I guess what I'd like to talk to you about this morning, Jeff, is that yesterday, the widely acclaimed and, oh, everybody was gnashing their teeth in anticipation for Hillary to say that she's going to run for president. And the media jumped up and waved champagne bottles. And they waved little American flags saying she's going to save the world. Why didn't they treat the Republicans with the same dignity? Right. Well, yes, as we have documented on newsflash.org, we have already seen uh, the media greet Hillary Clinton with, you know, an excitement. But if you just flash back to what they, how they covered Rand Paul, Ted, and Ted Cruz, uh, you'll see a complete disparity. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Rand Paul, they, they, they jumped on for allegedly being having a bad temperament. And Ted Cruz, of course, they have just continued their uh, same old, same old barrage of depicting him as uh, this, you know, budget-cutting uh, conservative uh, that is going to be too extreme for, for, for even Republican voters. You know, I watched a little bit of the question that was, and help me, Jeff, I can't remember the questioner's name from NBC when she was asking Rand Paul a question and she went on and on and rambled. Oh, Guthrie. That's it. And uh, she rambled on and on. And uh, quite frankly, I too would have been very upset with her inserting so many different points that uh, Rand Paul never had an uh, opportunity at all to break it down one-on-one on, one on an answer, I thought it was very unprofessional on her part. Right, well, and, you know, it's interesting to see, like, again, you can see the, uh, here, you know, is in disparity, you have Hillary, uh, who they pretty much stopped covering, the, I mean, there were some few mentions about her email scandal, but, you know, you get the information to see what kind of, how she gets treated in the interviews, uh, when she, when, when if she ever gets around to that, and, but with Rand Paul, you know, they don't even let him answer the question. How is, and Jeff, you've been around politics for quite a while, and the people you work for are excellent in asking questions about politics, but how is any Republican candidate, any of the Republican candidates, I don't care who it is, going to stand up at a debate against Hillary and not be accused of sexism? Well, yeah, no, it's a good point. It's so predictable. The level of media is going to to play that card. I think they've already they've they've done that. I mean, they I mean they're, they've been setting the, the groundwork for that. You know, ever since the whole you know ridiculous war on women campaign, and and you know, Rand Paul, you know, he pointed out the obvious double standard and hypocrisy of the Democratic Party. Uh, you know. Going on this war on GOP war on women, uh, jihad, but they're the party of you know Bill Clinton, the, you know the, the serial, serial sexual harasser. So, you know, and then, and then he got, uh, I think it was uh, Nick Rizinski called Rand Paul sexist for daring to bring up that obvious double standard. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty safe to assume that the liberal media will be depicting any whoever the GOP nominee is is. Uh, it, 
have sex with if Hillary Clinton wins, which might not happen, you know. It, well, explain that to me just a little bit, uh, Jeff. Uh, I think it's ludicrous that the Democratic Party hasn't at least got an alternative or option B, if you will. Uh, Hillary Clinton is probably the most unqualified candidate that I've ever seen in my life, and I've been around 67 years. Uh, I personally, I don't like the woman, I don't trust the woman, but I think what's going to be the worst thing for politics this year, and I want you to address this. This. The worst thing for politics and the worst thing for this nation would be to have a ticket with Hillary versus Jeb Bush. I think you'll see voter turnout at uh, in the teens nationwide. People are sick of both families. Yeah, you know, that would just be like, I thought we fought a war against England to get away from loyal families. Um, yeah. So, you know, right? Remember that? So, I, you know, I think you, you raise an interesting point. Um, but you know, look, the Democratic Party, they had a chance to, to nominate Hillary Clinton back in 08. Remember, she was considered in inevitable really back in 07. And then uh, Barack Obama came along, uh, and the, uh, the Democratic uh, uh, grassroots and the liberal media fell in love with Barack Obama. So you never know. You, you, maybe a Martin O'Malley, maybe Elizabeth Warren gets in. Um, the liberal media would love to find, you know, a, a sort of. A, a, I mean, look, they're all going to be left. I mean, the little media will only support a candidate that's going to be a leftist. But they, you know, it, they might, uh, they might go to someone else again. Jeff, I'm going to throw a name at you, and because you're the deputy research director, you can laugh at me or you can possibly agree with me. But if the Democrats were smart, which I doubt that's going to happen, but if they were smart, they would try to groom someone that is very moderate and liked on both sides of the aisle, like Joe Manchin from West Virginia. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, that would that would be probably the practical and pragmatic way to go, but uh, I, you know, I, I just I don't think there, there, that that uh, he's left enough for them. You know, he's you know he's I think he's uh, supports a certain amount of gun rights. Um, you, know, you know, and and I, I you know I think she, because he's from West Virginia, he supports coal. That won't run well with the environmental wackos and and. The, uh, in the Democratic grassroots and, of course, in, in the media. So while that might be the smart, pragmatic way to go in terms of, of winning a national election, uh, I would doubt that they would go that route. Now, we've seen, uh, we've seen Rubio and we've seen Rand Paul and we've seen Cruz throw their hats into the ring, and we're still waiting to see what's going to happen with Scott Walker. Do you think that because of his experiences as governor of Wisconsin and the SEIU union and how he defeated them not once but twice, do you think this is going to be a bloodbath in the media? Right. You know, bringing up Scott Walker is a great point. Like, if, if we covered how they just attacked uh, Walker mercifully during that whole union fight, and he, he won those fights. I mean, he won an election, he won a recall. Uh, and I think what you see is, depending on how conservative the candidate is, uh, you'll see the media attack them more vociferously. So you haven't really seen a lot of sharp attacks on Jeff, because I think many in the media view him as more moderate, but you have seen a vicious attacks on uh, Rand Paul, on uh, uh, Ted Cruz, on Scott Walker. Um, I think Rubio is going to announce tonight, so it will be interesting how they, uh, how they treat him. Um, we were actually uh, posted on Newsbusters a collection of some of the most vicious quotes against Rubio, uh, and what we already seen is that if you are a uh, a quote unquote member of the uh, quote unquote minority community and you're a conservative Republican, they hate you and they will throw even racial slurs at you, as we've documented on them on Newsbusters, uh, where you had Donnie Deutsch actually use a racial slur against Marco Rubio, and you had people, uh, you had anchors like Charlie Rose and George Stephanopoulos uh, depict him as sort of a quote. You know, token Hispanic, uh, which is really insulting and obnoxious. Uh, so you may see even more of that if uh, Rubio announces tonight. 
You know, you work with this every day, Jeff, and uh, I know your bosses and uh, really straightforward people. But honestly, when you look at the news media, with the exception of Fox News, uh, in trying to get a fair shake for conservatism or the people that uh, are on the right, how are they going to do it? I mean, is conservatism in the media dead? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, you can see uh, with MSNBC, they they when they decided to just go full left, and uh, CNN is kind of like left light, uh, and then of course the networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. Uh, you got to remember that the people that run Democratic campaigns and work on on the Hill, a lot of them just go right into the media and go right into the press rooms, and they come right back up and run and run. Uh, Democrat campaigns as well. It's a revolving door that we've documented at the MRC.org. So when people ask me and radio hosts like yourself ask me why is you know why is the media so liberal? Even when you look at the success of the Fox News, you think, hey, maybe pre market they would. Hey, look, we have Fox News. Maybe we should be more conservative. No, no, uh, they will never do that because the people running those organizations and and the reporters and anchors of those organizations, they are in fact Democrats. That's who they are. I mean, look, you have George Stephanopoulos covering, you know, this latest Hillary Clinton run, and he was a press spokesperson for the Clintons back in 92. So this is who they are. Mm -hmm. They're liberals, the Democrats. Oh, yeah, but when you say that, though, and uh, I'm not trying to have everybody run into a cave and pull a rock in after them and just lay there and quiver and shake, but what good is having an election when already I think it's safe to say that the news media has anointed Hillary as the queen of the Oval Office so why bother with the expense of an election it's <laughs> a, a good point well you know because uh, sometimes the media doesn't always get it right so uh, uh, you know somehow Republicans do manage to get elected uh, certainly on uh, in terms of uh, see the recent success in, in their, their midterms and uh, uh, but you know even even when Republicans get elected, they don't necessarily govern conservatively because once they're elected, they feel the pressure of uh, when you get here in, to D.C. and they feel the pressure of, from the media to you know oh no if you if you govern conservatively that, I'll make you out of touch you know uh, but they, they forget what what got them elected was taking conservative stances and then because the media browbeats them when they show up on the morning shows and. And say, well, you know, you can't push too hard on these social issues. You can't push too hard on guns. You can't push too hard on uh, uh, cutting the budget because you're just, you know, you're you're going to be hurting the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they 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 set barrage. And they stopped governing conservatively because of it. Let me part of that. one final thought here, Jeff. Uh, and I've said this before on my show that the biggest enemy that Hillary Clinton has is herself. She has a very smug, introverted personality. She has a holier-than-thou attitude. And I think if anything is going to destroy her in the leading up to the vote for her to be president, I think it's going to be Hillary herself and not the opposition. What do you think? You know, you raise an interesting point. Uh, I think you're right. I think uh, if you look at the Clinton family, she is the one that does not have the charisma that that, uh, that Bill has. Uh, on the other hand, look, Al Gore was not very charismatic. John Kerry wasn't very charismatic. Now, they, they ultimately lost, but the media did everything they could to, you know, uplift them. Uh, and uh, bring their, their opponent down. And those were close elections. I mean, people forget, uh, 2000 and 2004 were relatively uh, close elections. So even if their candidate, if Hillary, is deficient in the, uh, in the charisma category that appeals to, you know, your low-information voters and your in independent voters, uh, it's, you know, the, trust me, the media will do everything they can to drag them across the finish line. You know, here's a thought I was uh, worrying about a little bit earlier this morning, Jeff. Let's just assume, and God help us, this doesn't come true, but let's assume that Hillary is the president uh, in the next election. Who in the world and who in their right mind politically would like to be the vice president and tie their horse to that wagon? <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe we'll just get Biden again. He <laughs> <laughs> seems like the kind of career politician that would uh, enjoy that. You know, they would, they, you know, anyone that becomes the vice president to uh, Hillary probably knows that, she, that, that they will be 
in the back seat, uh, and and <clears throat> there will be no challenging, certainly. All right. You know, this man is the Deputy Research Director at the MRC Media Research Center. I really value these people. They do a great job on my show. Jeff Dickens, thank you so much. God's blessings to you, and come back again real soon, would you please? Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Very interesting young man. Thank you very much. Oh, my. Did you see what time it is? Well, it's almost past time for our weather forecast. And the weather this hour is brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. I love talking about Don Scarrow and Scarrow's Meats over in Jerome at 331 North Road, Jerome, and the telephone number 324-7657. They do sell taste one bite at a time. They've got for $300, I know I had a call the other day and a guy said, man, it's fantastic. He went over and bought one. The $300 tax return meat package, you get beef, you get pork, you get chicken, you get cheese. And it's delicious. Absolutely phenomenally delicious. You get things like rump roast, New York steaks, pork chops, bacon, brats, chicken, cheese. Oh, my. Call them today at Scarrow's Meats, 324-7657. They do sell taste one bite at a time. Here now, Michael Rogers Weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zeb at the Ranch. Yes, there's rain in the forecast. How do I know that? Well, you should know. I've only been doing this for the last seven years. Uh, it's going to be breezy today. So the quick quiz, because it's going to be breezy with a wind advisory all the way to 9 o'clock tonight. Where is the storm coming from? Uh, this particular one is something that you are familiar with, have been for so many years. Got an area of low pressure up there by Vancouver, Canada. Cold front extending all the way down into California. We should be hitting rain by Tuesday, Tuesday night. So to get there, you got some wind for today. Daytime temperatures still in its 50s and 60s, but otherwise, uh, we're going to be clouds. Let's see rain for this week, and we're going to come out of it, but it's going to be short-lived because we got a series of spring storms coming through the Magic Valley. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you've got. All right, Michael. Thank you very much. Once again, don't forget that $300 tax return meat package with Scarrow's Meats. Mm-mm, delicious. 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. They are selling taste one bite at a time. You know what? Why don't you take the telephone and give us a call right now? We'll talk about any subject that you want for the next couple of minutes. Uh, I've got a couple of stories, but we've got a little open time here. So give me a jingle at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, did you hear about in Boston? This is a story that as parents and grandparents, we should all be outraged about. In Boston, a seven-year-old girl, little seven-year-old girl, is dropped off on her way home on the school bus at the wrong bus stop. She's dropped off at the wrong bus stop, miles away from her home, and she's found wandering the streets of Boston, crying and scared and lost. And the school, when confronted with this issue, came out and said, well, it was the little girl's fault. She got off the bus. What? At seven years of age, in a huge city like Boston, Massachusetts, they're not more careful about, now, is this really your bus stop, and who are you, and you're supposed to be getting off at this bus stop. Are you kidding me that the school would turn around and say, it's the little girl's fault. She should have known where to get off on the bus. Please. Ah. Callie, good morning. You're on the air. Zeb. Yes. I have an item for you that is, you can call it history or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it just happened about, when we talk about the wolves and we're trying to take care of them, I have a bit of history about 75 years ago. There was a bounty on magpies mm-hmm. in Cadgett County. Mm-hmm. And I was born and raised on Cadgett Creek. And so when this bounty came up, the, the magpies had stripped the fruit trees, they'd picked on the baby lambs, robbed the pheasant nests, chicken nests. And uh, so they put this bounty on, I think, for just a while in Cadgett County. But anyway, we would get one cent apiece for the baby birds 
and fifty and five cents a head for a, an adult bird. Mm -hmm. So I had a twin brother and an older sister. So when our father was coming to Burley, we would really get busy. So that's one way that you can take care of a, an influx of anything. I don't know about the wolves. What do you say? Uh, you know, me and magpies were not the best of friends. And I was warned, and I have been told many times, well, you can't shoot the magpies. Why, they're the state bird of Mexico. Let me tell you something. I, I've said this publicly on the air, and I'll say it again. Magpies are a dirty, filthy, greedy, grubbing bird. They have taken and destroyed my wife's bird feeder for all the other good birds. They've made messes all over everything. They have had absolute free reign to go in and crap all over my barn and everywhere else. I will shoot them every time I get a chance. There. That puts my neck in the noose, doesn't it? <laughs> we were pretty, you can either call it rugged, forked, or whatever, when we was raised on Cash Creek. But anyway, uh, if our father was coming to Burley, can you imagine what we would do? And he didn't make too many trips to Burley, but we'd all get busy. And I wonder what would happen to us now if we if we come a toting in a, a whole sack of bird heads and baby birds. You know, you raised the question a minute ago, ma'am, about the wolf control and uh, hunting and the licensing for hunters and trying to manage the wolves in the state of Idaho has not worked to keep the numbers down to where they wanted with uh, hunting and the buying of licenses. And uh, the environmentalists are out there trying to take the hunting away. They're trying to take the management away and basically give free reign to the wolves. And I will tell you that before Obama leaves office, uh, we're going to see a much stronger approach from the environmentalists to try to deplete any regulations at all. And they want a free reign and an open reign for more wolves to take over our state. I I am an advocate that we need to manage the numbers, we need to shoot them when they are seen, and uh, I, I just think that something's got to be done. This thing is getting completely out of hand. You're right about that. Well, I thought this might be a little touch of history because it had to be 75 years ago when this happened. Well, let me just say this. If you have a bag of dead magpies, come on over, my dear. I'll help fill it up. Well, of course, it's off now. We'd have been strung up for sure nowadays. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Dad. a good day. I know that I had somebody uh, call me. Oh, my, they're a protected bird. You can't shoot them. Yes, I will. I'm just telling you folks, yes I will. They have come in and they have just made a mess out of my horse watering tanks, a mess out of the watering tanks for my steers, and they've made a mess out of my barn, they've made a mess out of everything, and they are not welcome on my property. The only thing they better be doing is passing through. There you go. I don't like magpies. Uh, don't forget, uh, Great Big Spring Time, I know I'm going to hear it. I know I'm going to get letters. I know I'm going to get calls. Go ahead. When my shotgun is lucky enough to reach out and touch them, I like that. Don't forget Big Spring Tire Sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And I mean a big, big tire sale. My goodness, they've got some of their tires like the Eclipse Tire on sale, all-season traction for your passenger cars. And they've got the Open Country AT2 on sale for your pickups and SUVs. Oh, my goodness. And they've got very convenient credit for tires and services. they got battery shocks and struts. And they've got a lot of the new wheels for 2000 15 on special low prices and you know they've got the best in brake service oh my goodness yes great brake value promise right there at your magic valley les schwab tire centers you stop in and see the best they really care i mean boy i've been impressed with these folks for a long long time lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul john on pauline and twin falls and randy on overland and Burley, absolutely the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers.
Um, once again, I want to hit this. I told Dan Tracy the other day that I've mentioned it quite a few times. Uh, the Elmo Boy Scouts are going to have a turkey shoot, and that's going to be on April 25th, Saturday, at 10 to 2 p.m. And it's going to be located up at Elba by the cemetery. They're going to have lots and lots of prizes. Matter of fact, I think they got a special shotgun donated from Sportsman's Warehouse, and they got knives, and they've got all kinds of passes for like Durfee Hot Springs. A lot of food for purchase up there, and they're going to have a silent auction, too, on many items. So don't forget that coming up on Saturday, April 25th from 10 to 2, the Alamo Boy Scouts turkey shoot at Elba by the cemetery, okay? We are going to close it down for today and tell you tomorrow on Tuesday. We've got a lot of great guests coming on the program, including, uh, let's see here, we've got a uh, taped edition of Dr. History. It's his last week gone. On. He's over in China. Next week, we're going to hear all about that trip. It's going to be really exciting. Fred Wood's going to be on the program tomorrow to talk about the Idaho legislative session. And don't miss a minute of it. Give us a call. Zeb at the Ranch, the way things were or the way things ought to be. God bless. Have a wonderful day.